that's what yeah, we know. That includes the CIP. So that's what we know. That's what we know. That does not include the CIP. That's beautiful up there. Yeah, we know what the PBL is. We know what the public is. Yeah, right on the back. Yeah, I'm every day pretty much. We know what those are. So is this the pretty big one? Yeah, right. Yeah, I can
you say what you just said? What impact? Yeah. And that's what you were saying. It's a dollar thirty-five subtract minus for the school, but it's a dollar fifty-eight increase for the town. This is the first we time we've ever talked about one or the other. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just focus on this for now. Yeah. Let's just focus on this for now. Yeah. Yes, and the school was that, and we never talked about looking at the whole picture. So this is the first time. No, they were saying that it was only 23 cents. So right. That's why. Trying to figure why that, why that was, yeah. So, I'm sorry, it was a negative $1 and... 35 cents. 35 cents. Total estimated it, tax impact, including more articles, and decrease in revenue. That's the difference. Right. Okay. 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 Um, I do have... Uh, news to report that we ratified a um, CBA this evening. Um, I don't have all the details with me, but I can tell you that that um, came out to 61000 on the positive, on the additional side. Um, and it is $0.22 cents on the um, yeah, tax impact. Um, What's the um, impact on that? 22 cents. Yeah. So your overall is a negative 113? Yeah, you know what, when we were talking, I'm going to have to clarify, I'm sorry, because when we were talking about it earlier today um, at that meeting, we were talking about it as the tax operating budget was a negative 23 cents and then the CDA was positive 22 so we we're about even to last year but I'm looking at this it doesn't make sense to me so I really I have two different figures and I'm not sure which is correct I'm sorry but best case scenario is bigger negative and worst case scenario that we can see is you know, negative one Still cent, it. basically, right, yeah. So, um, yeah, and the um, agreement that we ratified, one of the school board's main goals of the year was to get all the paraprofessionals um, out there, you know, paid appropriately, and this agreement puts them all on their appropriate step, so that um, for a number of years, like decades, there have been people who have the same amount of experience being paid at different rates across the board. Um, and so this gets everybody where they're supposed to be um, with the lowest at $12 an hour, the lowest paid paraprofessional at $12 an hour. So, I can tell you that. Well, we'll be getting a copy of the agreement once it's all typed up and up ready. Yes, um, and uh, that will all be presented on Saturday. on Saturday, for sure. Yeah. Just in time, yes. <laughs> Are there any changes? Sorry. No, please. Any changes in the health in your agreement? Or? I, I don't think so. Um, as far as I remember, it's the same as it was last year after all those changes. Oh, okay. But you had a decrease, if I remember. Yes, right. last year, for sure. Yep, yep. Does anybody want to go through item by item of the school? Well, nothing's changed since the presentation. The presentation so. Are there any questions? The easiest discussion of the school budget. Oh. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a kudos. It's a kudos for holding the line. For right. sure. Thank you. So just to clarify, Emily, yeah. so the um, the operating budget proposed tax impact is negative one thirty five, but the school is proposed twenty two cents. No. Twenty two cents. The the CBA. I mean, that's CBA. Yeah. CBA. So that that's what. Again, I'm going to say that I have two contradicting numbers. We were talking about it earlier today. We were talking about it as the operating budget was negative 23 cents and the CBA was positive 22 cents, meaning total it was a you know net it's negative one. But this document says negative 135. So I want to make sure before I say 
which yeah. is actually the case. Which was the original post that's the one that yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and when I asked Katie, can you remind me what the um, what the tax impact is this afternoon, she sent me over this document again. But then she wasn't there when we were talking about what the tax impact was this afternoon. So I'm just not 100% sure, so I, I don't want to unequivocally say I'm sorry, but it's, we'll, we'll have that for public hearing. Now. For sure, yes, yeah, and I will email them tomorrow and clarify and email that number out to you. But just be super sure, yeah. All right, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> this is one first. <laughs> uh, so I guess just to be clear, the final grand total new budget proposal is five million five hundred fifty seven thousand and twenty three dollars. That's what it says on the bottom line there, yes. <laughs> I thought and I that's my the like for the first. school district. But that does not, of course, include the CBF. Right. But that uh, that includes the SAU and everything else mm -hmm. that's included. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Just want to get a little bit of time here before we move past this. Anybody? You can keep the ball rolling. I'm fine with that. <laughs> Just so, um, well, you'll have more details on the contract itself, right? Yes, yeah. Everything will be presented on Saturday morning. Okay. Mm -hmm. When is that Saturday? Uh, this afternoon. This afternoon. Yes. The school board signed this afternoon. So, just real quick, if, which happens frequently in Allensburg, the operating budget passes, but the, the contract does not, it defaults back to. The former, the former, right? And do you have a tax impact on that? Um, it's in, it's in this one. Here. Do you know where it is, though? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, they have. It's actual. It actually would be more. Thank you, yeah. If they well, default I think back, it is um, because also we have a couple of retirements and we're budgeting a mid-range salary for that, and they are retirements that are at the top of the scale. So I think. Um, there's that. The call budget would be a bit, probably uh, half a million dollars less. Mm -hmm. Was it less? Do you mean mm -hmm. the seat operating no, no, no. budget yeah, or the contract? I think Michelle was talking about She was the talking about teacher's, teacher's contract. contract. Yeah. Now the teacher's contract. Well, but if you take, so the default budget would be the five million three, right? Mm -hmm. And then you add well, no. And then you're subtracting where we are now, which is five million five. Is that right? That we're five. Under, yeah. Yeah. So it is lower, which is unusual. Yes. But they're both going to be in separate warrant articles. Mm -hmm. Right. But I'm just right. saying, you know, you know, a lot of times what's happened in the past is it's cheaper to do the contract, and people don't vote for it. Yep. Yeah. But in this case, it's actually the opposite, which is mm -hmm. unusual. Yeah, yes. that's unusual. Because you didn't do any changes in Right, there's no other changes. But we have the retirements. Is that paying your I don't believe the retirements I don't believe it shows up in here. Well you still have the retirements. Yes, it's gonna change. You still have no, we're, we're talking based on the contract. So, so, so we're not talking you, your default is not a true default. No, because you're, you're, you're going to have to have those retirements in there. Right, but Is that's the default. Are you looking at a difference between the proposed and whether we add the other? Because default is completely separate than whether we pass the teacher's contract. Right, that's what I said. Yeah. I said if the teacher's contract did not pass and all that passed was the operating budget, which happens a lot, what's the difference between the default and that? But like Denise is saying, the retirement is going to be in there no matter what. So, so you're going to have your default plus. Budget. No, right. is, is it, it should be in the operating budget then because it, retirement doesn't matter about the contract. You can retire. We're paying out our. Yeah, you still have to pay out retirement, I believe. Whether you get the contract or not. Yes. Right, right. But I'm, so it should be in your operating budget. So for this year, not for next year. No. Right? No. Well, uh, oh. well, no, they just gave notice, didn't they? That they're retiring? 
you paying up the $25,000 um, retirement? It would be in 19. They would, get, they would get their retirement in July. But your yes. budget doesn't end until June 30. Mm -hmm. well, that, right. Yes, right. but the new budget is July 1st. So they wouldn't get their retirement until the new budget. They don't know that these people are retiring right. in this current year. So th that's my... Well, that's question, why I remember it. It may, might not be right, but... I guess the question would be, can that money come out of the current budget, or must it come out of next year's budget? If they have... Right? If they have money, so they probably could. Yeah. But th there's no <clears throat> guarantees. you got to pay it one way or the other. Absolutely, but um, I, I think in years past, what, what's the retirement amount? Twenty five thousand. It's based on years of service. Isn't yeah, it? it's based on years of service, so and is. we have um, sick days and things mm -hmm. that we have yeah. to pay out. Right, so. ballpark? Is it? I don't know for the procedures. I'm sorry. That's okay. But I mean, in years past, return. the school was turned back money to the town. And would there be sufficient funds in this current budget, assuming no disasters, mm -hmm. probably shouldn't have said that, um, to fund it out of the current budget rather than next year? I don't know. I would think that you could if you had the funds. Um, I mean, it's, it's all this town money. It's, you know, yeah. So, I would maybe, think that you could, because, again, bottom line authority. Um, and it's it's not a, it's not really contract. It's contractual of what they have to do when they're deciding on retirement and what they get on their retirement. But I I think you could take it out of this year's funds if you had it. But I think it has to be in this year's 2019's budget to assure that you have the payout. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah, let me look into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, And then you find something that you don't have to if you have the money. That's the, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. My only question for the school budget was the fun time rental. So fun time. Um, do you know how much she charges per student? Because we only charge her twenty two hundred. Them twenty two hundred. Mm -hmm. um, each child. If I were to send both my child to before and after care, it would be five thousand dollars a month. Five thousand dollars a month. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. Yes. Oh, that's what she, that's, what that's why. That's five thousand dollars a month for two children to do before and after care. Yes, it's over one hundred and twenty-five dollars a week. That's over a thousand dollars a week. Five hundred dollars. Doesn't make sense. Not 5,000. Oh, sorry. Yes. No, I was like, <laughs> sorry. It's late. Let me get another cup of my coffee. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, but that it can't is possibly be $500. Yeah. Oh, no, but it's $500 a month. But it is really $500 good a month for one, for two children. So at $2,200, I think that's quite a deal. And it hasn't changed since I was on the budget committee 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. So has the board thought of increasing that line? We have talked about the agreement that we have with her, or the you know the, the rental agreement. I don't recall whether upping the rent was part of that agreement, but we did talk about you know making sure that we're paying attention to the fact that this is a contract that we have, and I'm not sure whether there is a multi-year contract in place right now. That and that was the end result was that we need to look at it as the current lease comes up. Right, and because I've had many, many parents say, I can't afford the before and after care, including myself. So I can actually send them to private school for less. So due to the before and after care. Yeah. But would that make the situation even worse? If we have her rent, does she have her fees? Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I don't know. Or we find some, some other way to do before and after care. It's but not a school program, though. It's a privately yeah. run program, which right. is not our. It is not the school board's. Um, um, they, we don't. They don't have to tell us or tell them what they're charging. It, it's not. They don't have jurisdiction. It's basically the same. Oh, well, what I'm no, telling you is that we have many children in our town that don't have before and after care because they can't afford it. Mm -hmm. So isn't that the whole point? 
the point was to, to allow them to be, previously, it was to allow them to have the facility to do before and after care, but you cannot control what they charge, only what we charged them. You should check and see if they have a contract, because they never did before. They didn't before. But they do now? Have okay. Implemented a contract. Right. Um, yeah, but I don't know how long it is, and I mean, I'm, I, I haven't been a part of any conversations about, you know, how that would affect fees, if they is even appropriate, or if they've happened, I have no idea, but I mean, I think maybe that's more of a rec committee no, thing to look into. Rec. Well, I just mean, if, if we, the town were to do some sort of before and after care situation, that strikes me as a rec committee thing and not a school board thing, you know, like if, if, if we were to look into doing some sort of non-private before and after care, right? I don't think it's the school board. But isn't it the school board that rents that space out to the mm -hmm. daycare person? Yeah. They're just following the rules of what, what it is per a classroom for rental. I mean, they do give them a bar. They used to give them a bargain based on they were doing a service for the school, but they were they were getting the, just a discounted rate. But again, when I was on the school board, we were told it isn't our, but it's right. not their responsibility to tell us what they charge. Right. So if they wanted more control over that, it would have to be a town operated, right? Can't you just increase the rent? And they'll increase the rates. They have to a certain amount of money that they have to make to guess. make it worth their while. And run a business. if you increase, increase rates, they'll increase right. their rates. Well, then you start losing customers, right? Hmm? It gets too much worse. You start well, losing customers. Well, then, then yes, but being provided. Buses, there's no child. I mean, there's almost no child care in this town. Buses will drop them off. Right. You know, so I know that was a challenge for me. Sure. So, Emily. What is the selling factor of the collective bargaining? Because every year it comes up as why should the town vote vote for it? Mm -hmm. And some years it's been, you know, the health care is going in less, so it's going to be a saving, blah, 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 blah. But what is the selling point this year? Because my fear um, is looking at this, the default is less, which is unusual, I think, in my mind. It seems to be an unusual factor that could affect your ability to get yeah. that passed? Well, I think our hope is, um, you know, the number one hope is that people acknowledge and understand that our paraprofessionals have been charged, been paid uh, at a rate that is unfair to many of them um, as far as as where they are based on their experience um, and what they get paid in relation to other paraprofessionals. And so fixing that problem was has been at the top of our list this year. Um, also making sure that um, they get paid appropriately for the work that they do and starting pay of $12 an hour for the job that they do, I think in my own personal opinion is still incredibly low. Um, but we're getting, I feel, to a, a point where it's respectable. Um, so I'd say that that is the number one um, selling point on this, is that we really need to make things right for those people. Along those lines, mm -hmm. is there a review process for them in terms of who gets, you know, or is it everybody gets the same and no matter how many years it, everybody moves along because there can be vast differences in They are unionized employees. Mm -hmm. um, so being part of the teachers union, I, I, it's my understanding that they kind of fall within that same process of review. So then is there a, re a, a re review process for them? And, and if they don't make certain they're part of the union. They get it regardless. So mm -hmm. they, they are they are reviewed. They are yeah they, they are reviewed, reviewed for years. and th there's a process in place similar to with teachers where you know it's a verbal written you know all that is in place. Yeah. But as far as the steps go, it's similar to like yeah. a teacher's step. So there's no merit. There's no merit. No, no, not built into the schedule. No, yeah. No merit, but you can have in your contract that. Um, increments can be withheld. 
that can be part of a union contract. I, I don't know if it's part of yours, yeah, but that is something that if somebody is not performing, um, that increment is withheld until... There was, when I was on the board, there was some change on that. I cannot remember what it was. I'm not sure. It had to have several steps, if I believe, before anything was withheld, and it had to come from the recommendation of um, their... Would, uh, there, uh, it would be the principal who does the reviews, I still believe, right? Yes. Yeah, so um, had to be come down from that, but um, it was not, I can't remember what, if there was any withholding. Yeah, I don't remember been, anything like that. So the discipline but, action, was, you know, but they've had five contracts since I've been on there, so I don't know what, but that they did have that, but on the contracts, they all get regardless of performance. It's not a performance con um, contract. It's right. Yes. steps. Right. Yep. So, just to follow up, um, so your low is 12, yep. which as a taxpayer, I feel that's terrible. Um, but um, as a taxpayer, I also understand the impact of it all. What is the high on our parent? I don't know offhand. I'm sorry. Um, I want to say there are, uh, just from looking at the page earlier, that I think there are like eight steps to it, and I'm not sure how many, how much each step is. I'm really not, but that will all be presented on. So are Paris have steps now as well? Yeah, we have uh, like steps, it's just payment schedule, so I'm using that term loosely. <laughs> Emily, what percentage of the teachers getting for a raise? Uh, one percent. Huh? One percent which is significantly below COLA this year, I'd like to point out. They got caught up last year, which is good. Mm -hmm. It is are. good. It is good. <coughs> but a lot of your teachers are still on their uh, steps, right? Yeah, I'm not sure what the percentage is. Five and five. Five mm -hmm. and five. five Across, we yeah. tracks five down to hours. So every year it's five percent. Oh, I'm sorry. Every year it's five percent. Yeah, I thought once you jump to the next step. I thought you meant how many teachers are on the top steps versus how many are but traveling. But no, but you have them. a lot of new teachers. They must be a lot of them must be still on your step scale. Yes, there are. Most of them are on the step scale right. with with two gone. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you have you you have five percent on your step yeah, no. plus your one. And then you'll have it if they have tracks. That's another five percent. So some could be getting up to eleven. The yeah. The I thought they changed. To, the, I'm saying some. You have no. to have you have to do the, the yeah. track is not a guarantee. They have to work for that. Right. right. I thought they changed that they'd only get one or the other. No. Um, yes. I think they changed it back. Okay. My last one had it one or the other, and then the yeah. next one they took it away. Mm -hmm. They have both. So I'm not sure if it is, I don't know what it is right now, but so potentially it could be up to 11 the or six. Total it is a $61,000 increase. Mm -hmm. um, and I know roughly, and again, this is rough, 40 of that is the paraprofessionals. So that leaves roughly 20. Mm -hmm. That's going towards teacher salary. Because the good thing is you, you've gotten, I'm not getting rid of, but that the ones who are, who are the highest paid beyond their tax and steps and making a lot of money have now retired, which is what you want so you can get back into your, your time. Step um, financially. Financially, exactly. So, I mean, it has its pros and cons, but the track is, and the steps are 5% each way, so I have to understand that if they're on there, they're getting that plus the annual raise. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Or I'm all set for Sandy. All right. Good. Let's move on. Maybe we'll get done before 10 o'clock, Paul. Mm -hmm. Maybe we will get done before 10 o'clock. Okay, so I guess we need a motion to take the dollar amount of the... Of the
school budget forward to the hearing. It's a public hearing. It's a public hearing. Yeah, but you have to say that what you're bringing forward isn't no. as no. the budget committee's recommendation to go forward. This is a vote on it, just to bring it forward. No. Bringing it to the public hearing. Okay. Yeah, because I guess that's my question here is what what is the purpose here? Are we making changes, recommending changes, or are we waiting to hear from the public? Correct. Right. Right. You could do both. Yeah. yeah. You could do right. both, but so, I would suggest. I mean, I'm, so, I'm fine with bringing it to the public, but I I wouldn't want to make any definitive statements about the budget at this time pending the public input from right. what they say. Right. Correct. I guess if, if we were going to make suggest making changes at this time, then I would say we should vote on that. If we're not yes. making any changes. We have to vote on it anyways. You have to vote it to whatever you're going to bring forward to the right. public hearing. So this is the budget committee's budget that's going forward, right? right. Okay. To I'm a hearing. No. Yeah, just to a hearing. To hearing. But it's that's not recommended by the budget committee. It is yes, when you make it is. until it's how we can do that before the public hearing. Yeah. Yeah. It's at it's oh, we at do the Saturday. You have to make it because we're talking as a budget committee, we have to make a recommendation of what we're going to bring forward to the public yes. hearing. When we make that recommendation after the public hearing, we're going to meet again and we're going to make our final recommendations of what we're going to bring to the ballot. That's what the how process is. Somewhere. And that's yeah, when you would again. say the budget committee oh, the deliberate, I'm sorry, the deliberative right. You're right. And then, yeah. But you have to you have to vote that you're going to take forward. It has to be on record that you... Yeah. As Kim said, it's our budget, so... Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion that we bring the budget forward complete. We can't vote on anything with the contract until you have better numbers, though. Yeah, I don't think so they will. So this is just an operating, operating budget. budget. I, don't, I don't feel prepared to vote on this budget. There are still some open questions. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought everyone was done. Okay. Oh, oh on the well, on the school budget, yes. That's what right. I'm talking about. Okay. All right. So I'll make school. School. Apologies are school. school. Yes. Yeah, okay. You don't have, even have the CBA number, so there's right. nothing to right. vote so on. Right, right. So we can't do anything on that. Yeah. So is it five, five? Five seven zero oh, two three. Is that the number? I don't have my book. I thought I had it. That's what I wrote. Oh, okay. oh okay. we were supposed to get that on the The final. Yeah. Oh, I think it's five seven zero two three. Okay. I make a motion that we bring forward to the public hearing on Saturday five million five hundred fifty-seven thousand twenty-three dollars. Five 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 seven zero oh, two three. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Ayes on the school board. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Today, let's just go through it. You know, the presentations were in a different order. Let's just go through page by page so we can keep track. And if everybody got a copy of the most recent version, which has numbers on it, um, please, if you have them, have more of those? Yes, so they're working. Did you send those around? I think. Um, okay, well, copies. Caroline gave everyone a copy when she came in. Yeah, she no, there were six copies. Most people use them. Yes. Yeah. No. No. So there was not a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Send it to you. Okay, so um, before we go anywhere, I just want to make sure that um, we are on, on the proposed change by $670. So that the number on column of the 200, uh, 2019 proposed change dollars, the bottom line should be 193349. $170 for 
registered. Um, Could you say it again? One nine three three four nine. That's proposed. Proposed change. Proposed change. Yeah. Is that the proposed so the appropriation is correct. Got it. Is that the twenty nine ninety nine difference between that and the tax impact needs? I'm sorry. Is that so one this one nine four oh one nine? Um, that, the that, that is the correct difference between the 2018 budget and the 19 proposed. Yeah. Is what's on that tax impact. Um, Can I just ask one question? When you when you subtracted the difference, did you go by the approved appropriation at town hall or your revised budget? Approved. And that's what, it, because your your revised budget is eight thousand five hundred and seventy four dollars. The, the revised budget doesn't total, and it was never really intended to total. In a perfect world, you would subtract equally as you add in other places. It was just sort of an internal tool, and we used the same spreadsheet um, the, the, to make the proposed budget, sort of for reference purposes, so that you could understand how. You know, we understood the modifications to be necessary throughout the year. But no, the, um, the revised budget total does not equal the approved total, you'll notice. The approved total, you know, and that's because it was just a worksheet and we didn't clean it up. So the 19, the, the 18 approved budget is the 18 approved budget. Um, the rebudgeting column is anecdotal at best. The difference between the 18 operating budget and the 19 proposed is wrong in that sheet by the amount that you have on your tax impact sheet. The amount on the tax impact sheet is correct. That is the difference. Okay, so the proposed change is really 194019? Correct. 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 Mm -hmm. So not 193349? Correct. Well, a difference of 670. is 670 dollars difference. That's why I was telling you. You're not going to see the one nine four zero one nine in that column. Right. So we're still we still have a six hundred and seventy dollar mystery yeah. for why that column no, is not adding sure. properly. So the real proposed change is one nine four zero one nine. That's correct. Right. Yep. And that's replacing the one eight eight. <coughs> that's correct. Still don't know how you came up with it. With that, with what? If you take the appropriate for nineteen, subtract eighteen. I don't come up with that. It does. Mm -hmm. It comes to one nine four or one nine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's true. One second, okay. I see. So show. <coughs> I was just going to ask for clarity that Caroline said the only change here between what we had before and what this is is the expenditures were updated. That is correct. Yeah. That still give us an 8.8% .8 increase? No. Nope. Mm -hmm. It's going to be off by that 607. Yeah, slightly. Yeah. yeah. So it's about 8. Yeah, and then very good. Yeah. Or it's 8.7796964. <laughs> the last six digits of pi. <laughs> okay. So we're so what we're saying is is when you did the tax impact, there's a ten thousand for every ten thousand dollars it's three point six cents. Correct. So if we multiply three point six cents by that amount, we should come up with fifty eight cents. Not not exactly. Not exactly. Because You'll see on the tax impact, you've got the difference between the operating, um, between the years, but you also have the revenue. The revenue is accounted for in that difference, which is what, how you get the 58 cents. When I say $10,000, that's $10,000 without any offsetting revenue. And please keep in mind, it's completely estimated because there are other factors that can change that make this not at all set in stone. And also the select board has the flexibility to use overlay to... Um, adjust the tax rate when that time comes to. So it's very estimated, but yes. What is our assessment right now? $280 million. So um, I have this bond bank schedule that I got um, for the payment thing, and it has um, a payment of 193675 
and an estimated impact of 69 cents. Mm -hmm. So why is it different? I'm not following what you're saying. So, yeah, so this, this bond schedule, we get um, an estimated tax impact um, and payments every year for um, our, our total payment. So a total payment of 193675 with our current assessed valuation is really 69 cents. Mm -hmm. I couldn't speak to that without looking at it. And, and even at that, you know, I would want to see it in this person and play with it. I, I, I give permission to speak. Unless you want to vote. No, no, I got a problem with it. Okay, but, but no, but she's not on the budget committee. I understand. No, I, I just understand. wanted clarification. Yeah. I ain't got a problem with this. Yeah, no, no, no. Good, good point. Should have made that point earlier. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out if that 58 cents is really correct, or if it's really 69 cents. Um, so the auditor it. reviewed it and agrees. This is also, the value, our valuation is higher than this. Our current valuation is higher than the assessed valuation listed on this sheet. Oh, what is it now? So you said it's 280. Well, it's... It, it's, you know, so this is slightly less than 280. Um, what we have actually right now is slightly more than 280. Okay. Do you have that number, Ken? Not offhand. Um, can we get that when you have a chance? Sure. Thanks. So we don't really know... Um, well, so you, you said the auditor gave you that tax impact. He agrees on the 58 cents. We reviewed that together. Can we move, move maybe through the line items at this point? And, and, sure. Uh, so we'll start with the executive office, first page. And if you have a, a question or a concern about any of those items, can you just say which line number that is? I'll start with line four. I thought that we had asked that maybe it be split out so that we would know what the individual amounts for each position was going to be. This has three positions in it, right? There are three positions in it. Town administrator is 60, and then there's the minute taker, and the 20-hour position at $16 an hour. Um, but I'll get the numbers for you. 20 hours. with the number? The number is correct based on... Right. Is it open for the public to also get a job description for your new town administrator? <coughs> it's been accepted by the board of selectmen. So I can come in and ask for a copy? When it's after it's been accepted. I think I don't think it's been, I don't know, I'll have to go back and look. Okay. Yeah, um, first reading last yeah. week. Yeah, can we not get into that? Yeah, but that's not a committee. Yeah. So, we're executive office. Um, so, just a couple of questions. So, now that we're going to have a, um, potentially a full-time town administrator and also a part-time bookkeeper, um, has there been any discussion where the select board's responsibilities will be reduced significantly in reducing that line? With that slope boys? Yeah. Um, no. Because I'm not sure we know how it's going to be impacted. Because even though we're going to have a um, administrator, um, we still have many boards that we serve on and have nightly me meetings. So I'm not sure. And we have to prep for our meetings as well. So I'm not sure that we will know until we start getting into it. I think once we realize what is going to be taken on that we don't have the responsibility for, we probably would consider doing that. Okay. Well, I didn't hear the first part, Kim. Were you asking about the select board? Um, right. Yeah. Now that we're hiring, considering hiring somebody full time to do take on the responsibilities. You know. A question about the stormwater management. Um, I see only a thousand dollars is expended there. What are you anticipating? What, 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 oh, 18. number eighteen. Thank you. 
there's a lot of requirements that we have to do on a yearly basis. There's going to be a lot of mailings that we have to do, notifications, um, postings. Um, that's this is something new for this year because it just got accepted last uh, or submitted into like. Has that been 100% accepted yet? No, we have not been notified. So there's a lot of work that you will now, once you get your program has been accepted, there's a lot of work that has to go on on a yearly basis. So when do you expect to expend those funds? Throughout the year. Or at the end of the year? No, no, no. 19. This is 19. Oh, but there, so there's four thousand dollars left in that account this year. Oh, we won't be spending well, that money. Well, you reduced it to $4,000. Right? I mean, there's nothing on No, that. there's nothing else. It, it was but, spent okay, at $1,000. 19, not 18. I thought we were talking about new budget, not old. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, no, I'm just wondering if we could reduce that. No, no. Because we have no idea what what the uh, things are going to be required of us to do. We know there's certain things that we know, but there's a lot of postings. There's a lot of... I, I would I would warn against that because we're just finding out that um, it seems like there's a storm drain that's hooked up to the flood and sewer plant because we're getting ridiculous flows when the storm drains are flowing and we've kind of we, we believe it's the storm drain right before the flood and sewer plant. But that would be repairs. No, that would be. No, it, it wouldn't be in the management line. No, right. Oh. Well, I'm not sure where, where that would come from, but I'm just, I'm just saying it's coming down the pipe. We don't know why it's hooked up to the storm water, but it appears to be coming in. So, um, so you don't really know what you're anticipating for expenses out of that next year, is what you're saying? I personally don't. Yeah. Caroline might be able to... We did the best estimate we could, yeah. but we are very regulated by the federal government to do a certain number of mailings a certain number of times of year, for three to four topics at least. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all tied to our permit to discharge stormwater into the river. So we have to report on what we do and that we do it, and we have to report on metrics to, shoot, to prove that we're reaching the audience we're attempting to reach. And we're doing this in conjunction with a bunch of other communities that are helping us. Um, it is outlined in our notice of intent to discharge the stormwater that we submitted to the federal government. Um, about which we should he be hearing back shortly that we are approved for that. But um, there are um, stiff penalties for noncompliance. So while we, you know, we did not necessarily determine that a printing would cost X number of hundreds of dollars, we do know that we have a lot of printings and mailings and outreach um, things that we need to do in addition to other things like making sure storm drains are emptied and keeping track of how much salt that we use and other kinds of reporting requirements. So we'll know better next year? Um, yes, because we'll, have, we'll be a year into it, but the requirements will change year over year also. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So there's no proposed change at this point? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, line 24, contingency. I believe you had said that it had all been spent, but you're still showing a zero expenditure on that line? That is because those expenses happen in the categories in which they're appropriate. So um, contingency is a budget amount, but it's not an expense amount, if that makes sense. So when there's an ex you know, a contingency expense that you know, at an AC fails at the town hall, that comes under town hall maintenance, and then budget money is reallocated. So no expenses actually ever really fall under contingency. But shouldn't it show that, it's, that it went somewhere else? Um, in, a, in a perfect world, yes. Do we have that in, in the revised, if you went through and looked at the revised budget? That would give you hints of how money gets moved around, yes. Okay. Any other questions on, um, on executive office? Okay. Elections and registrations. Twenty twenty-eight. Voting groups. I thought Kate was 
take that out. Okay, so Kay presented her budget to us, which contained it, as well as other things that she said that she was going to remove. So we have not met since to um, talk about removing it. So that may be removed. Who? Yeah. Who? What? Who then? No. The four so selectmen haven't met since Kay met with you. Okay. So I will discuss with the board what Kate said to you okay. guys. Okay. Um, I don't think we'll have a problem removing the ballot box. <laughs> However, I do have a problem with removing her training. If it's state mandated, we believe that she should. I believe she should still go. So um, I would vote. Um, I would um, advise the select board not to remove it and to make it required that she attend. Yeah, and even, I don't know that we, or the town can require or make her attend, but at least leave the money there so we can say it's here. If it's a mandate and the state is requiring right. people to go, if, yeah. it's, if the select board doesn't at least put it in writing that we require her to go, then we're at fault for her not going as well. But she's an elected official. I get it. And then yeah. she can be, that person could be voted out. Get it. So. But um, but I'm yeah. sure that we will probably support the, the ballot. Okay. I mean, the voting booth. Okay. So that we wouldn't. Any other um, items on uh, elections and registrations? 43. Default budget should be decreased by 402. I thought we just on the page. Okay. Yeah, no, I was trying to just go through departments and, and check them off if we could. Um, no, no. Um, so elections and registrations, I think. Okay. Um, one of the things that we had talked about and Kate asked for an increase in um, her stipend for elections, um, I would propose that we, we increase that to $500. Okay, so you, you need to understand that her stipend, she also gets her regular salary for the day as well, which wasn't, I don't think it was brought up that that was the case. So she gets paid for what she gets paid because she's salary, plus she gets the $200. Mm -hmm. Just letting you know. Oh. Do we want to discuss any further or take a vote? Any discussion? I, I have why. Sure. Mm -hmm. I have it. That's my question to Kim. Why? Oh. Um, because ne now we must be two. That was her argument um, that it was more work for us to have it be two. Something about 40 to 60 extra hours to spend on the election. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. That she's not getting paid for. But my question is, is we were SB2 for the school before that. Now she's going to be 2. Go ahead. I just think it's an, an underfunded line. I, I saw it for three years for sand. And it is a the elections on Tuesday, but it starts on Friday the night before, up Friday the weekend before, setting up and breaking down. We're here till almost midnight, even after the ballots are counted. And even after the select board leaves, her and um, Charlie, who's the moderator at this point, are here past even the select board. So, because we have to sign the ballot boxes and all that good stuff after it happens. And then the next day, she has to clean up the mess. And now I understand that that's part of her job, but like she says, she's also still trying to do the other stuff at the window and unfortunately more and more mandates come down the line and more and more time is spent and it's not as easy as it used to be so for for i think it's reasonable so just to, just to clarify we can we can vote to add to the budget some amount of money and we can recommend to the select board that you know, go to our, um, our stipend at the end of the day, select board decides whether or not that's what they want to do about that. Well, I think we also talked, when we talked about this with her or at some point, about her giving us a definitive um, number of hours 
in, instead of kind of, well, it's this or that, but really getting down, you know, how much time does it take so that we know. Um, so I, I understand it can be a lot of work and so forth. Um, I, I'd really like to get a, a better handle or a better sense of how much time this is taking her. And if we have to compensate her more, then fine. Um, but I, I'd like to know exactly how much time she's spending on this. So my inclination is I could go ahead with the, the increase. I wouldn't mind, you know, that'd be okay with me. But I'd like to get a set of how much time has it taken her. So if we approve that, I would suggest that we ask the select board to see if we can get a sense of how much time is it taking her. She is now supplying any additional hours over what her required 20 hours are to us. Okay. Um, and we, um, I've just received one. Okay. Um, so, because we need to know, she, I mean, she said she just did it and didn't tell anybody for years. Right. So, in order for us to really think about and increase things, we have to understand what the impact is. So, she said that she would be committed to sending us what her hours are. Mm -hmm. When she worked on a Saturday to do the uh, transfer station stickers, that's not part of her 20 hour, you know. So, we got to know those things in order to make those decisions. But it, at this point, it's not our recommendation to go forward. And you also have to remember, if it's a uh, uh, clarification, I think, on this, if we're on one election next year. Are you talking about having that for every election? Is that? Well, it's all ballot voting now, so. But is, is it your intent for it to be for every election? Sure. Because that changed only because we went from three to one election this year. We can always change it next year. But now she's on salary, she's not on 20 hours a week. Right. She's salary, but her hourly hours are 20. Mm -hmm. But she gets paid, sa she's salary, you're right. Yeah. So if she works 25, she still only gets her regular salary. That is correct. Don't they, but her don't required they hours of week? operation are 20. Mm -hmm. Don't they only work 16 hours a week? No. No, she works five days a week. Right? It's just 20, right? Yeah, it's 20 hours. And oh, how but she Monday, Wednesday, Thursday? No, she's open every day. Oh, no. Oh, she closed one day. No, she's open every day. Oh, in the summer, she in takes the summer, Fridays off. She only has and that was to compensate for her time that she worked throughout the year. Oh, okay. okay. Is what she was, well, that's what she told me. Yeah, see, She so told so me so that, so that so she's taking those Fridays way. off because she worked a lot of hours throughout the year. So when, you know, okay, we talked, are we not going to do that? have the whole, every Friday off in the summer, or, well, it goes from July to October, so. I just want to point out the obvious that salary is salary, and the benefit of salary is sometimes you work less, sometimes you work more. Um, my question was about the Fridays, I mean, if not here on Fridays, you should be receiving the same pay, and the one week a year that she works extra is um, part of the salary, that's what a salary is. Um, so I, I would agree you with know, that. the $300 or whatever it is, is doesn't matter, but I think, you know, she's paid well. It's not um, like the Paris who are making $12 an hour, um, and it is a salary position. My, my one question is, is she's an elected position and that's it, that's considered a stipend. It's not necessarily considered a salary. I think that's the money that anyone that would go into that position is getting, I believe. And I don't think that there's anything anywhere stating how many hours she is to work. It's a fine line. Um, it's a, it's a I, I, the election is a stipend, in my opinion. I right, think it's right. The job that she holds, is a, even if it's an elected official, it's a job that she holds, and that's their salary. That's their compensation that the town gives them to do that job. And the expectation is 20 hours because we have, our expectation is that that window is open for our residents who vote that position in to be able to do their business. And if they have to have a study out, I mean, that's. Any questions? Yeah. Yes. Yes. One question here. The number of hours, anyway, we're nitpicking here, we don't know what we're talking about, but. Uh, since we uh, do automatic counting and so forth, doesn't that reduce the number of hours she has to stay here for counting and stuff like that? Well, the last time I did the 
we were we were out in an hour and a half after election. So. Well, um, when used to that, there was many more hours. So we're we yes. increasing the pay, but the time required is actually, to a layman's point of view, yes. been reduced also. So it, it should be a. I, I think it does reduce it, but I think we need to wait and see what happens to this ne this next election where both the town and, and school is SB2. The ballot is going to be three pages long for town alone and probably a page to two pages for school. So, I mean, there is going to be more time. You know, I mean, the thing's going to count it, but she's, she's worried that the machine's not even going to be able to count it with that many pages. She's worried about the machine, you know, Keeping up. Well, perhaps we're in the weeds because yes, it's maybe a personnel issue. And, and maybe what the select board needs to do is look at the duties of the job <coughs> and if the, the uh, hours have increased and so forth, then they need to change their compensation from what it is. And that's what we're, and that's and that's what we're going to decide question. to do. Rather than doing it with a stipend, you know, get rid of the stipend line completely and say, this is what you get paid. And these are the duties, and it covers everything. Well, the stipend was increased two years. I think it was two years ago. It was increased um, because it, it, I think it was it was a ridiculous amount that was. I mean, I mean, she puts a lot of. I'm not pushing at all. And when it was counting the ballots, she was here till midnight. So we felt that, and oh, I think it was two hundred dollars just for the year. We went two hundred dollars for every election, is what we decided to do. So I think that we were giving her value there. Um, there. But there are two different positions. There's elections and then there's the in my the town clerk. But the town clerk in, in her job is responsible for elections. I agree. I agree with so that. So I, I think if it rolls all into one then the select board ought to look at increasing her, her salary if if that's what it takes to do that job between the window and the elections rather than, you know, doing the stipend thing. So but, and again, I think that's a personnel issue rather than I agree. a budget issue here. So. But the window's closed on election day, so yeah. she doesn't have that responsibility on that day. That's yeah. why the compensation was put on for the ballot, on the, the voting. Call question. Call for question. <laughs> so. We have a, we have a second. Now. We got a second. So. Yeah, we have to um, shall we? We'll vote on increasing the stipend to five hundred dollars from two hundred dollars. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Could we do voice, please? Yeah, we're going to have to. Uh, Put our hands up. Secretary. Okay. Um, Raise your hands. Yeah. Jody said aye. No. No. Yes. 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 So we have. Yeah. Sorry. Why don't we raise our hands and then count all the yeses and then okay, those. Okay, all yeses. Okay. <laughs> voice vote means Everybody that Everybody who wants to say yes, raise your hand. <laughs> Did you say yes? Yes. One, two, three, four. Okay. Four say yes. Mm -hmm. Does not pass. For the record, so, I would do for the recommendation. So, I, I got one question, though. So, is the Saturday something new, or has this been... No, that's been gone. It's been gone for years. Working Saturday, so it comes to this. In the month of December. Oh, it's just the month of December? It's just one of the ones. It's just one. Just because Sorry. Get, Got it. There's three of them? She's done three. Oh, well, I know, but it's just when it's, it was changing of the the stickers, so it's the new year, right? Okay, no mind. So, one yeah, it's three Saturdays. Not doing it yeah. Got it. A year. So, uh, any all opposed? Okay, please don't transfer. Vote now. Opposed. One, two, three. I'm not opposed to compensating for them part, but I think it should be reflected in the salary uh, of whatever. You got different elections in different years, it should be reflecting that so forth. So I, I want to uh, measure the salary rather than uh, compensation for 500 or whatever. I'm not 
and that we agreed is probably a select board mm -hmm. um, personnel issue. Yeah. Correct. That's true. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interest in important. But I think. Um, are there any other discussion items on elections and registrations? So, um, do we agree to remove the voting list? I can't. I can't. You can remove it, but I'm not going to remove it. I make a motion to remove the voting um, $700 from the town for no, election registrations for the voting booths. I can second that. And Nancy seconds to vote. Okay. Do you all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Yeah, I can't do it. <laughs> we forgot the discussion in between, John. Sorry. I just wanted to ask a question. Okay, sorry about that. Why, why preempt the select board? Because they're probably going to take it out anyway. It's our budget. It's our budget. Right. But it's, it's our budget, budget committee's yeah. budget. Whether they we need it or not, and they say yes or no, we can still say take it out. Right. We can have a different number than oh, that budget. I know, budget. but I'm just saying, what's the... Because the money that goes to the budget, the money that goes to the bottom line that goes to the town is the budget committee's budget, not the select board's budget. I'm aware of that. Okay. I just so know it, that the budget, the select board is planning to alter it. So why preempt that? Because they're going to ask at the end of all of this if we want to vote on the bottom. To put it forth. Mm -hmm. to the, right. Right. So what, okay. I'm just trying to understand your question. Do you think it should be left for the select board? Yeah, I mean, clearly they are, want, are interested in having a discussion about it and want to make a decision as a board. Why I don't understand why we don't just allow that to go on. happen. It seems like the natural course. I was just wondering what the point of... I think I can see it either. Either way, really, I don't think it makes a big difference. I, think, I see the point that we're, we're putting our budget forward on Saturday, on the following Saturday. Um, I guess we would have to meet and go over it again and then decide if the select board changes, do we need to meet again? And, I don't and know. This is why I'm asking the question. Is there a reason to preempt the select board? The select board can still vote on the decide that they want to remove it or they can keep it in those theirs because in years past what has happened is, is we've had another line where it's been a recommendation by, by the... Oh yeah, they can cut it wherever they want. We're just cutting their full budget by $700. I understand that. Right, yeah. but no, in past years we've had a line that isn't just the selectmen's line. We've had, like, the police have had a line on what they're asking for and the select board has had a different amount. But that's usually what shows is that all of the department heads, usually their numbers also show up as well as the select board's numbers when we've gotten a budget in the past. So, Emily, there's, um, there's two columns. There's the budget committee budget and then the select board budget. Um, yeah, so we're just working on the budget committee budget. Okay. I, I think more properly we should have just voted to remove $700 from this right. budget because it is... The select the board's decision. decision. I mean, they could say, "Well, we're going to do it anyway." So, um, and, and again, this begs the question of Why bringing it forward now or waiting till we hear from the public to do all of this. So that's. You know, that's, yeah. right. that's why I'm wondering why we're voting to yeah. bring it forward to the budget when we can change it, it. It could unless we hear from the public, right. we're not going to know what the public right. is going to want, and that's what we are here for is we are here to right. give input of what we feel the public would want and take the responses from the public into I agree consideration. And, and maybe we should be looking at these things and saying, well, maybe let's we should this. remove this. You know, let's make a note for when we meet after the public hearing. Let's, you know, these are items we think should be removed. Large unless the large. public all of a sudden <laughs> would go to our meeting. We got to the same and says, vote. we want to vote. You we, you know. Right. <laughs> okay. Because so, we got two more right. meetings to yeah. adjust this budget. Right. Because we don't know what they're going to do, so I don't know. Okay. That's, again, two cents. In past years, we've, when I was on the budget committee many years ago, mm -hmm. we would agree to move the budget forward so that the public, we could hear what the public wanted. Right. right. Yes, that's how we used to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than going through this analysis now. But then it was brought up later that, well, if you show a difference, 
will wake up the people at the meeting and they'll talk about it. So there were two different opinions about it. It either will either, either slip by, yeah. you know, or, or it won't slip by. That was the... Well, it's going to slip by. Nobody goes to public hearings. The point is, though, that she submitted this budget, not the board didn't put a voting group in. She submitted the budget, and then she turned around and submitted a different budget to the budget committee. So inconsistency with the town clerk right. is causing this issue. And in this case, also, she, she came and told us she was going to take it out, so it's kind of moved, I think. Okay. So... Which way do we want? Well, I think you know, I'd say whoever said about putting a note on the side was actually probably a really good idea. That because again, we're bringing forward this budget to hear what the public has to say, but to have notes on concerns, I think, is appropriate so that after when we deliberate ourselves, we remember what our issues were and compare it, like Nancy said, to what the public is saying. I think that is important. Oh, the, well, this budget isn't final anyways. There's still errors in it. So it's going to have to be fixed again before it goes to public on Saturday. And the, the same could be said over the stipend issue, too. If, if the public comes forward and says loud and clear, we want her to have more money mm -hmm. you know, for these things, then I think we have to take that into consideration. So. Um, mm -hmm. So with that said, well, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Um, with that said, should we just go through this and maybe discuss and make some notes that what we think we should move and then, you know, end this and then when we go to the public hearing, we, we list the public's input and we're meeting directly after the public hearing. That's when the decision. And that's when we that's can, when we make the first you know, decision. Go into this and, and make decisions and then we. So, so instead of voting on each item that we want to right. change or right. notating, it could, be, it, it, it could be in a suggestion, but not yeah. voting on everything that we would like cut out yeah. until after we hear from the public. Yeah. Would that be okay with everybody yeah. in the room? Mm -hmm. So now we have two votes. Right. That need to we have to unvote what we voted. Do we? But we were changing it. The first one failed. The first one failed. So it's not just voted on yet. No, it's not no. a real vote. We did. We, 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 we jumped well, the gun. I needed well, to discuss. Well, she had to finish <laughs> discussing, so <laughs> if you wanted to, so I'll, withdraw my, I'll withdraw my second if you'll withdraw your motion to. I don't care. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's a moot point. Right. Yeah. Whatever. Doesn't All right, so I'll withdraw withdrawing. my second. And she's withdrawing the motion. <laughs> okay. So have we gotten through uh, elections and administrations? We can move on to financial administration. Are there any questions? Here are Charlie. Yep, forty three to fall budget should be reduced by four hundred two dollars. And the line underneath the payroll should be reduced thirty dollars because the default budget was not. Those are errors. Yep. Errors. I brought it up last meeting, and it's still here. Okay. There was a dollar error on that. Thirty. Thirty. That's just the default it budget. Be. It's just on the default budget. Okay. What do you ask? I'm sorry. What What are you asking on number forty three? Or what are you saying the that's on? Okay. On the, on the tax collector, yep. the default budget shouldn't be twenty thousand four eighty nine. It should be the previous year of twenty thousand. Zero eight seven. Okay, I took it. Just a okay. math there. So that would be bottom line difference. And the same thing with forty four. Thirty dollars. Any 
anything else in financial administration. Okay. Moving on to evaluation. Anyone? Okay. Personnel administration. Now, how much of this increase in health insurance is budgeted by the new position, the manager or administrator, or whatever the name is? We went over that last time. Okay. We went over that last time, Ed, that the, the, the person in the role already is already getting health insurance. Okay, so, so they are already is, You're saying there's no increase, you're just being on that shift in title. Right. Okay. Most of the increase is due to the change in the plans of some employees already in the program. There's 39,000 all change in plans. There's a lot. Most of it is change in plans because we also changed the the a plan that we're offering, which is reducing the cost. So the the increase is, is going from, for instance, a single to a family or a, or a two person to a family or. It, it, that type of thing, employees in house already. Uh, okay, so just it's a change the in, the, in the medical plan that they're buying. getting. Because okay. we did change our to an AB20 plan, which oh. is less money. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, on that health insurance line, then what you're doing is you're just putting in a place of what the current position is getting whether it be family, single, or whatever, and we're just placeholding it into this position. That's Are you talking saying. about the, the oh. opening position? Yes. It kind of has to do that because you don't know that's what you're going yeah. to get. But it, it happened before those people left, the changes in plan. So yes. But the people who left, if they had a family, we're budgeting for a family because you don't know what you're going to get with the new position coming in. So you you're kind of have to budget appropriately. Just real quick, do we still do a buyback? Like if somebody doesn't want the plan? Is that so? I don't think the town does a buyback. I asked town the same doesn't. question. No, the town, town doesn't, doesn't do one. The school. Just the school. No, police they used to do. You mean like if they don't take insurance? Yeah. yeah. No. No. Once upon a time they yes. did. You are right. That the, once no, that they did. That was a while ago. And yeah. you don't do that no, anymore. No, I asked that question as well. Their policy changed. 18 months ago or something. The personnel policy changed about 18 months ago. Oh, hi. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Sorry, I'll come again. Yep. Are we done with uh, No. We're on personal administration. Yes. What, what line you got? Line 64. Here $1,529. It should be 40800 Yeah, I already caught that. Yeah, it's been, it, it, it has been changed on um, on the oh not on the copies that no, you did copies. that you sent out, but in the real in version, the, yes. yes. So so noted, Charlie. Thank you. Yeah. Is this all going to be corrected before the meeting room? Started? Yes. Yes. It's been corrected already, but like I said, what I told you, the only thing we're off is the six hundred and something dollars. Do we send that email with us? Okay. Thank yeah, I'll resend it to you. Okay. Which, which line are you changing again? Um, it's line 64. 64, 64 it's the total. Instead total of the, the proposed change. The proposed change of 15, 29, it should be Total of the personnel. Oh, you're in the um, 64. Yeah, yeah. Is that number? Yeah, what you're looking? 40,874. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't show different on the bottom. Bottom no. thing. It's just a okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Don't know how. Got the right bottom. You're also on. Oops, we're not there yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. So, any more questions on uh, personnel administration? Okay. Planning and zoning. Okay. Online. 69, it should be a proposed change of $5,000 in there, which would be a 5018 for the uh, total on that line. The 5000 didn't carry over to the proposed change. 
On line 70, reimbursable 60. services? No, sixty. I'm sorry, 70. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Seventy. You'll see that it's 5,000, but it didn't carry over. But it is still in the bottom? It will still I show don't know bottom. what my paper is. Is it in the bottom? So it what? changes the subtotal in that category, but the very bottom is left unchanged because the, that whole column is not adding appropriately. Yeah, that's so. what the proposed budget and the and the um, approved budget, those columns are correct. It's the change that's the issue. So just compare with what's being proposed to what was last year, if you want to see. Yeah, I, I went through the whole budget this today, and it's, I figured out which one's the only thing I don't have is the $670. Okay. Any more for planning and zoning? Government buildings? So I have a question. <clears throat> Why is only the fire station heat going up and every other heat line is going down? On line 85. Line 85. So heat at town hall is down, heat at the garage is down, heat at the transfer station is down, but the fire station is on the down. Well, I don't want to speak for Ed since he's here, but Ed, don't you like it cold? I mean, George. <laughs> they did just recently service their unit there. That may be a factor. I don't know if it was running inefficiently. That's the only comment I have about the fire. They have they have both oil and propane. propane. Yes, they do. So that possibly, they have two units. When they added the new uh, two bay on there, they put a propane heater in there, and the rest of the building is on oil. It could be that it's whatever... Okay, uh, the um, fuel might have gone up based on one of them, where here it's only one Oil. type, right? Yeah. So I don't, I don't really know. I mean, bottom line is they keep it on the cool side too in the winter time until they go in the building and then they crank it up. So I don't know if it takes longer to reheat a building that isn't maintained at a level, or I don't know. Yeah, but it's the only gas is there, I'm sorry. Propane, propane is on the new bay. It was on the one furthest to the um, uh, over the bridge. So, so propane's pretty high up right now, anyway. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then the the other one is on the uh, the other four bays is oil. Just a quick question. I'm wondering if maybe you put the, the 7900 is because that was the anticipated revised from the fire station for this year. So maybe you carried it over thinking that it's, that it's might possible. be. Um, well, that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't they do not do the, the budget for those items anyway. It's, it, it's in house that here that does that. Correct. Is that how often does it be? Is it on delivery? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so then I think they're going to um, stay within their budget for this year? They don't do it. We do it. Do you think they're going to stay within their budget for this year? Um, 68 on this year? Yeah. yeah, we went to 79 and so far we're at 68 on 9. So yeah, I think that they are going to. Um, it's they probably they don't have anything else coming in for, yeah. for 18. So there, there will be more bills for 18. One more? For, um, for maybe even two. You know, because yeah, it's on demand and, you know, it's not monthly that they get billed, right. so there will be more fuel bills, whether it be one or the other or both of the fuel systems. So I would expect that it would be really close to the 70, 7,000, it may go over, but the 79 should be sufficient. Mm -hmm. And that's on all of those buildings. It's not just the fire station that's may get They're all delivered that, yes, they're yes, they're all going to go up. Affected. We have a question on water and sewer. We got enough money in there with the rates going up? Um, I discussed with the, I sent an email out to the board of selectmen that, that we should consider increasing that, um, and I will bring it up tomorrow night also. Um, okay. I'm thinking about increasing it by 40%. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because we don't have a number yet, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Frank. We have a well on the septic on Silver Street. I'm sorry? Yeah. What was Silver Street on, on Town Water? That's well. septic. So you have water, but not, not sewer. That would be a savings to this building. Kim, we're not there. 
different meeting. <laughs> <laughs> senior officer retiring. We got to fill those positions. Right. We need the money for them. I thought they were merit-based. Right. They were merit-based. They, are. They, so, were given, mm -hmm. they were given a percentage. Not all of them got it. Right. Is that, so, I think that's your question. So, skews the, so it kind of skews it a little bit. Um, but you had a sergeant leave doesn't mean you're going to hire a sergeant. So, yeah, but we need to have that money. I mean, we can't keep police officers. And we're cutting the police budget. So this bottom, sorry, I'm done. That's okay. So this bottom line that Chief presented of five five two two one two is what he proposed, or what the select board proposed. Mm -hmm. board. Select board. The chief proposed three percent. Okay. So you just said that Kate presented a budget, and you put in what she asked for. So why didn't you do that for the police? Excuse me? I said what? Right? I said what? Right? I didn't hear what you said. So when Kate proposed the budget, <coughs> the select board placed what she asked for. No, that's not true. You just said that. No. She asked for a higher raise. We went 2% across the board. No, but I mean the items. Just the bottom line, right? The bottom line. Right, her overall line is yeah. the same. Right. So okay. Kate's overall budget went in as is, but the police's didn't, is what she's saying. Right. And, mm -hmm. and the police, is my understanding from our discussion last time, or when the, police, when the chief was here, was that they had proposed 3% and the town decided to go 2% across the board. Right. Yeah. So, so what are we, what, I'm confused or what? I, I am yeah. confused yeah. about what Joe is saying. Salaries are not, it's not a 2% increase on the full-time salary line. Right, but because you talked about one police officer might get, I'm guessing, 1%, another well, police officer might get 3% because it's made based. Right. So. That's the chief's position to do that. We're not, if he's, but it's when he was, given three, he was given 3% mm -hmm. last year, yep. and he gave his raise based on merit. Yep. Not everyone got 3%. Right. Okay. That was what. Right. So, <laughs> nobody got more than that, though. Mm -hmm. So he turned back money because it was based on merit. I'm just saying every year, it's been 2% of the full-time salary line, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Caroline can probably explain it better. The full-time salary line is proposing a 2% increase on current salaries, It is, which is a 1.3 on the budgeted amount. In other words, the current salaries, if fully expended, will not reach the budgeted amount. Oh. And so there is a 2%. There is a budgeted 2% on the current salaries mm -hmm. by those I positions. We, I don't feel like we can use current, current salaries because we're not fully staffed. We're not fully staffed. Our police department is not fully staffed. So you can't use 2% on the current salaries because then somebody comes in and you have to pay them less. If you give your 2% your to everybody, then you just reduce the salary of the person who comes in the door. There is a there is a thirty nine nine ninety or something is what a starting right. salary is on a, a new police officer walking in. That doesn't change whether we give a two percent, three percent, or five percent. However, what that doesn't happen, and I talked to the police about this, or the chief about this, is that salary never goes up every time you get a two percent increase, which it should, because you're never going to catch up to what it should be. And so that is something that I think we need to be working with the police department on, is to making sure that the, the starting salaries of these positions need to go up if our cost of living goes up. 
that should go up as well. Yeah, and this has been discussed. I know we discussed yeah, this before. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and so I understand what you're saying. Do you understand what she's quite saying? That if, what if, I'm saying if the chief doesn't increase the salary by 2% every year, he gives, say, 1%, then it's not going up with the... And we're not competitive any longer. Right. Well, that's, that's where it is. That's what I'm saying. Don't take that $2,000 out of the full-time salary when you can't even hire and retain people. You know, leave it in there so we can hire and retain people. But our hiring is, is it, it, they have a process downstairs. This is not a select board's decision. They have a process of what the starting salary is already. And for a police officer, it's 39 dollars But Bob already said he has flexibility in that number. Because so, of what, he's, what he he's lost. Good. I mean, he lost a sergeant. He might so bring in somebody some, with more experience. And, might, and ha as long as he gets board approval, he can offer more. If he finds a more senior person, again, mm -hmm. we're getting into the weeds here. Mm -hmm. If he finds a more senior person, he, he has the flexibility to hire them at $43,000. Just like he has the flexibility to give the lieutenant a $5,000 increase at any time. So he has flexibility in that line. No, he needs, yeah, board, he 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 needs, needs, board, he needs board approval. Well, he got it last year, right? Good board no, approval. No, no, we're getting, I'm saying, we're getting I'm saying there is flexibility in that. But he doesn't have that only decision power. He has to get board approval. Okay. I think what's happening here is this, he was being proactive and doing merit raises for all of his employees and it's bit and it bit him in the butt because now he's not going to get the whole two percent because the current employee is not he didn't give the whole two percent or whatever to. So if we hire someone else, he's restrained because he bit, he got bit in the butt by doing a merit. Because they're going on what was given as a merit for this year and not going on what was proposed in the budget. So all I'm saying is in years past, it's been a percentage on that line. Not on what the current spending is, it's been on the line. And now we're proposing to change this for the police department. And we're changing for the fire department. We're doing a 24% increase for the fire department, and we're doing 1.9% for the police. That's ridiculous. I won't support this. Uh, I'm no. done. I guess, wouldn't it make more sense to have the positions, you know, chief, lieutenant, sergeant, or like all in one, two, three, and what they get, you know, what their salary is, and that's, that's what we fund. We fund that amount. So, if they have everybody, everybody gets paid. If they only have three of them, that money's there. Maybe it doesn't get expended, it's, but it's, it's there for them so that when they can hire them. It used to be that way. Yeah. They changed the budget now, it's all lumped into one. Okay. Yeah. Right. It used to be That's each not position. position. Yeah, each but that way we now. could fund each position and we would have the money set aside to fund those positions and we could know who's starting where and so forth. Right. Because if you remember, Bill, I asked that same question last year as to why it wasn't separated out because we need to yeah. now so that as the lines go across, yeah. it's not by a person, it's by a position. By position. Mm -hmm. Which in this town is by person yeah. because of the number of people. No, we had it. No, there's no, but I'm saying that if person. there's a change in personnel, then that line shouldn't is is there. Patrolman one. I spent. I spent. But at least that way we would know, to get you know, be able yes. to fund the positions. So I, I don't know. Yes, the town how much they spent. It's public knowledge. We should have the breakdown. Mm -hmm. We had it two years ago. Well, then it. I mean, is. There seems to be some consensus then that we feel, or some <coughs> could be the police department should maybe get some more money. Um, so yes. maybe that's something we should we should listen for the input from the public and then discuss that on uh, on Saturday or the uh, Saturday next, or yeah, at least have it yes. yeah. broken out. Broken out line items, so you know, patrolman one, he might only make twenty five thousand dollars. Patrolman two is making thirty five thousand. Does it make difference? Well, how do you know? I just look at it from the standpoint of how we can fund it. So we want to make sure each position is getting, you know, whatever. So, but I think that might be a topic for further discussion. I think if we're all paying ten thousand dollars less starting salary than all the neighboring towns, mm -hmm. officers short, we have to do something about it. 
and remember, we still don't get all, they still don't get all the benefits of surrounding towns either. So, they still don't get dental, which. So I think there's a consensus that, that but we're not going to try to do something about it today. Yeah. Right, agreed. Can we ask um, the select board to make a, make a change? Or is the select board already? Well. What change do you propose we make? Can we recommend a, a change to that budget or? Can the select board make a change to that budget? Okay. No, we can't. Can the budget recommend a change? We'll do it after public hearing. Yeah. We can. Okay. And we can recommend a bottom line change. And Correct. And we can say we believe this ought to go to the police so separate. Yes, that's to try to, to try to hold on to the office's order. Right. And, and then the select board can. The budget can pass. Yeah, I agree. But whatever happens, it's the select board's decision. Any other questions or discussion about the police? Uh, this one comes to This one's going to be contentious. So we'll move on to the fire. Uh, <laughs> the I had a question on 153. Mm -hmm. What is the, I don't understand what the MOU cost has to do with fire. Is this the radios? Is it, yes, the MOU is the radio um, um, heater that we had to put in for Dover, and it was a large amount which Mark negotiated with the city of Dover to have a Dover period of three years. But is so the radio purchases is not in there. There's two, there's two radios in that. Mm -hmm. Two radios and the so MOU? The, mm -hmm. Yeah, because okay. it's 4452 four, four, is the um, MOU, and he's asking for 50, but they're asking for 50. So I believe there's two radios in there, because they're 5,000 each. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, sorry, yeah. Well, I'm just going to raise her question again, is why, from the point of view of consistency, that we're uh, proposing a 24.4% increase for our salaries on the 9142, and why I see 2% elsewhere in the budget and so forth. What is our logic of consistency? Why, why is there an exception to this? If there is an exception, then from there should be a footnote or something so to me as a voter to understand why this big jump there and, and no explanation is just yeah. it's a little bit of a black box because the way it's it's not really like a regular salary it's, it's a quarterly amount that they break up based on some point system which we asked for more clarity on it so some I did ask for that and we did yeah um, to done. understand better what because what we were told is sometimes uh, the Responders are getting, you know, less than minimum wage. It just it all depends from from how many callouts they have and how much they have that quarter to, to to split up. So it's not really an apples and apples comparison. I think what what the chief was telling us is that that he felt that the folks that were responding were significantly under under compensated, and that's why it was high. That's that's what he told us, and we did ask for. Some backup for that. I don't think we got it. I didn't get it. Uh, he want, We asked for the formula, how we determined um, by call basis. His other comment, when, when Chief Rodgers was here, he did explain why he went up on that line, and it was because he's trying to compensate them to. He's trying to get some minimum wage per hour is what he's aiming for. Oh, so we have. And I asked for um, the number of man hours that goes into this pool of money. So we have no idea. How many people is this funding, and how many hours they're putting in? Yeah. Um, but we're asked, being asked to swallow the twenty-four percent increase, which I won't do. Um, like I asked him to send. We it. need a lot more detail. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, think, I, I think even though you can't predict forward, we could look at past and get a sense mm -hmm. for it. Yeah. Since we're asking for the police, can we get a breakdown of the personnel on that salary list? That's good. Yeah. Number of positions 
um, paid positions and the number of hours per paid position? No, I, I think it depends yeah. on who shows up for which call. Yeah, we know that. But that's yeah. okay. Caroline, well, do you have that? You have to have that salary to pay the salaries. They calculate it actually. So but they. you have who and how much, right? I have who and how much as a, you know, yes, uh, in the past, but I can't tell you how they came about those numbers. But I no, can no, tell I you. No, no, I know. He still has his supplies with the formula. I just didn't know if you knew the, how many employees per payout. It does vary was. a bit, but I can get it. It's, you know. I'll ask Mark for it. Maybe about 20, something like 25, something like that. Okay, I'll ask Mark for it. But something if you get, you know, you get a total year, um, salary or pay mm -hmm. per person and you get the number of man hours then it's pretty simple math to figure out about what they're making it out. Yeah, if he's if he's trying to get it to minimum wage, wage, he must know that not yeah. they're not getting minimum wage. Right. So we just want to see the numbers. I don't think it's as easy as you as you yeah. think it's getting it is, it is. what the hour what the hourly wage is because it you could have two people show up for a fire call, you could have twenty yeah. people show up for a fire call. So it's then different your minimum every wage time. has gone down. I mean the the more people showing up, the pool of money's Going down. Yeah, but if we can if we get a general idea what it was in the past, and that would yeah. justify bumping it. Yeah. He asked for a, a number. It must have come from some kind of calculation. Well, like I said, he would. I mean, and, and he also talked to you. Eventually, he's going to be looking to have day coverage or something of that sort because he can't get the people there to respond to uh, calls during the day. So he's gearing it for that part of it, but he's also aiming for minimum. Yeah, no, I get it. I think Ed, Ed's but point. But I will. Um, I'll ask him again. I'll send him an email. Ed's well, point is that the, the, yes, the no. town people yes. aren't going to understand it. They're going to see 24%. They're going to say what? And so you just need to be able to explain it. Uh, no. Okay. I'm not. All right. Any other um, questions on fire? No. 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 Building inspection. That's a two percent, but increased hours. How many hours is that? It's going from five to six He's per going week. Five to six a week, right? Yeah. What's his hourly rate? Eighty, plus the two percent. Can I ask, is he a contractor or an employee? Are we contracting him from another town? No, no he's, he's an employee. Yeah, he's an employee. So I have a question, um, like, like in, a, in a world of contracts, typically a contracted person has a high rate, and then an employee, when it's hired, um, gets a lower rate. Um, where did we arrive at that rate? Was it requested by him? Mm -hmm. It was at the time when he came on as an employee. He came on as an employee when he retired from his full-time salary position. Um, he was, prior to that, a contracted person, and I, can't, I don't remember what his pay structure was at that time, but it was, that was the amount he requested when he came on board as an employee. So, I'm going to ask the question, then. $80 an hour for a building inspector? Mm -hmm. And that's standard for all towns. That, to me, that's the big amount. I'm just asking the question. $80 an hour. He's also the health inspector as well. But that's a separate line item, isn't it? No, it's, no, it's, a, it's, oh, it's zero. It's all, in, it's all inclusive. But it's so that being said, it's he's paid in a salary structure based on that number of hours. So he takes care of whatever needs to happen within that time frame. Um, the justification at the time was that he's got 30 years of experience. He's always been the building inspector, but he's got 30 years of experience here, plus in a major town with a lot more activity. So he's, you know, you're not paying for an entry-level position. He's also got a lot of planning experience. Eighty dollars a dollar, I wouldn't expect to be paying for an entry-level So he also has a lot of planning experience, and he informs our planning and zoning situations, too. He doesn't just go and he doesn't just approve building permits and inspect um, projects, but he helps internally with um, zoning and code violations and health violations, but also he's really helpful with planning and zoning um, situations and process 
because he's um, he's been the on the planning board in Dover for a good many years. He occupies the city manager's seat on the planning board still, um, and he's on the state board of code enforcement officials and helps to write state code. Is that salary or hourly? He is paid salary based on a certain number of hours. We charge for this, right? Um, inspections? We get a lot more in revenue than we pay, yes. Okay. Does our revenue um, from building inspections cover his salary? Yes. Okay. Any other questions on the inspection? Highways and streets. Um, can, what is the current, so your note, Carolyn, 2% um, across the board on the existing rate. What is the existing rate? Which line are you talking about? Uh, line 176. Road agent. So he was budgeted at 52, but you can see the revised budget amount. He was given a $1,000 increase for the year, but it was halfway through the year. So the 2% is 2% is over 52, uh, rather 2% on um, a $53,000 annualized amount. So, so the sentence current rate is 53000 that is his annual amount, yes. You're not exactly seeing that in the budget or the revised budget because he was given a $1,000 increase, but it was only halfway through the year. 2% of 53 doesn't add up to 2060. It adds up to 1060. Is that because the thousand is in there as well? Even the thousand. Sixty plus. So it's like um, it's actually almost like three point nine. I I agree. Like fifty, I get fifty three four ninety eight. Well, hold on. Wait, hold on. No, it's, it's 2060 because they went by 52, and they gave them a thousand during the year. So it's actually the 53, and then yes. 10, two percent. Yes. If you take 53,000 and multiply it times 1.02, one plus the plus two, two point two increase, you get 54,060. Still the other thousand showing up because of the raise you got halfway through last year. Right. But this is the new budget having that oh. raise. For, okay. That's the proposed oh, change. Okay. So the fi so it's fifty three. I see what you're saying. Okay. So the proposed is the fifty three, um, and then fifty four oh six. I got it. Okay. So the ten sixty. Mm -hmm. So there's that's no a proposed change on the whole line. Include correct. So the salary increase and the um, across the board. Correct. So there's no error on that line. Are we just confirm. Mm -hmm. I just had a question, and it might be for George. So you got to wake up, George. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening to you all. <laughs> Um, on the full-time staff, it, the increase is based on overtime being factored in, but isn't the part-time staff helpful in alleviating the actual overtime? No, during a snowstorm. That's the only time he gets overtime is during a snowstorm. No. And that's Bob. it. Oh, uh, and when he covered the transfer station, we were short-handed. Okay, and then just a follow-up that um, in the past the part-time staff has maintained the sidewalks with the bobcat. Is that going to happen? Just as a question. Part-time? 
In the past, the part-time line item was somebody to take care of the main street sidewalks with a bobcat. We do that. So, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a part-time, but it's one of us, the sidewalks are being maintained. The staff is doing it. I guess my point is, is, is the overtime the overtime isn't being used. For, usually, if the sidewalks, I'm doing it. Ninety percent of the time, right now, and the part time is doing, you know, driving the truck during the storms. It, there's no overtime accrued doing the sidewalks. Okay, that was what I was asking. So, it, no. okay. It's, Question. So on the um, the full time staff, that's um, 130 hours overtime. Is that correct? That one person. Yes. One person, right? Yes. Um. So what is the overtime for? Snow removal. I remember if we had snow in April, I believe. And again, that's always. Based on the amount of snow we get, of course. Nancy, you have a question? No, I'm not going to. Can I have one more question, George? What was the increase in, in hours for the part time? It says more hours plus. We've been doing more projects and we're using extra people to uh, help us with these projects. But what's the increase in hours? It says more hours. Under so line it, it, it may not be the same person. We bring in another person, you know, like sometimes it takes two extra people to do a project. Or it's just to give us more flexibility on using them uh, for more hours when we're doing these projects. I think what she's trying to ask is how many more hours did you add? I, I just added, I just put it, uh, you know, a, a number in there, with, including the raise. I, you know, I don't know how many hours it's going to be. I, I, I'll use them as much as I can use them for that amount of money. Because that's also part of our uh, snow removal. Because that changes on, you know, again with the snow. And I just make a comment um, that with a 30% increase, and I understand it's only $4,500, but with a 30% a increase and then a 12% above that, um, being on Main Street, the um, sidewalks, and great, you know, we've had one snowstorm, maybe two, um, but the first storm, the sidewalks weren't touched at all. So I'm just concerned, that's been my beef for 30 years of living on Main Street, <laughs> that you know, the money gets put in there to make sure it's maintained because kids walk to school. I want to make sure that that is what's happening. And when I see an increase like this, I'm not going to buy that it's for the sidewalks because if they don't get maintained. It's definitely not specifically for the sidewalks. And the reason for the sidewalks not being maintained all the time is if there's no frost in the ground, that machine is actually too wide for most of the sidewalks. And it's going to cause more damage than it will, uh, you know, while maintain when the ground is frozen, it's easier to be able to plow that sidewalk, and you'll see that the edges of the sidewalk are being dug up when the machine is on it. The sidewalks are five feet wide, or close to. The machine is six, so we, you know, we do the best we can with what we have to do that job. But what are, I guess I'm not, I don't want to get in the weeds on this, but the projects that you're referring to, though, to make this increase, what? It's not just sidewalks. It's got to be some other things as right. well. Right. It's road projects and stuff that we're using the extra help on. When we're doing, like, we've done a lot, we've done 85 ton of paving this year. You don't do that with just two people. You've got to have extra help when you do these bigger projects. Yeah, and, 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 and you're not spending the full value of a paving job. I mean, we're, we're paying for the hot top and not paying, like, bringing a crew in for $10,000 a job or something like that. We're doing these projects that a significantly lower rate than it would be if you had to hire somebody. I just want you to note that the part-time line also contains plow drivers beyond our two full-time people. We're talking about projects, but just know that it's plowing too. On the part-time? In the part-time line, yeah. 
So again, I'm, I'm trying. I'm, what I'm trying to get at is the increase is substantial, and is the increase because we're doing more projects in house and we're not contracting out. And if that's the case, then where do we see the savings on the non-contracting out? So. Um, I just want to comment on that before maybe George wants to answer. Um, the 2017 expenditures, you've got $29,000. Um, it's very winter dependent. So while there may be goals of projects, just keep in mind that it's very winter dependent. And now that we have a second full-time person, um, you know, that should alleviate that line a little bit so that we don't have to compensate for potentially reaching 29000 again. Um, but it will fluctuate anyway, given winter. I just wanted to note that. Did you want to talk about projects that you... I My question asking? still, and again, I don't want to belabor the point, but I'm just... And I know when you presented, you talked about, you know, we did X job, which would have cost this, and we saved this. But I guess what I'm asking is if we're going to see an increase in these lines, which is substantial, highway is the highest of all the categories, where is it, where's the offset? Where are we seeing a savings that we're not contracting? We're not seeing savings, we're seeing increases. Because we're, we're doing more. Yeah. I can give you an example sure. from one. Okay. When I was on the budget committee, we had to do a tiny little golf work. On Old Mill Lane. Right here. Yeah, that's we had to contract it out, and it was thirty-five, thirty-five hundred, four thousand dollars. Where our our crew now now we have a crew could do it for at cost plus their plus their hourly rate. So it was fifteen hundred dollars in materials or whatever. So when we do those little culverts that we can do in house, that's saving us a ton of money. Just that alone. And, and I don't dispute that, but I guess my point is that there's an increase in road maintenance on 197. There's an increase in labor. Um, so we're showing all this money going into the roads, which I firmly agree needs it. Um, but I think when you go to the public, people are going to have a hard time understanding where the savings is when they're seeing an increase in the, the actual product and they're seeing an increase in the actual labor. And it's, do you understand what I'm saying? And that's all that my point is, is that I think if that's a, a point, or a piece of the budget that needs to be well explained, because anybody sitting there is not going to understand that. Right, and that, this was brought up in the budget when, when they presented mm -hmm. that we said that, you know, they, they should do a better job of explaining what they spent their money on, and that's something is, that we already brought up. Which right, is but it's something nation. that has to happen, or... Right, so you're saying before month, Saturday? Well, two Saturdays. Two Saturdays. He did see, but I'm not yeah. going to understand that. Right, but we're talking about, are we talking about the place that we have proposed, mm -hmm. line item? And so, um, we did ask for more of a breakdown on mm -hmm. road projects, and that's what this... Well, that's just feeding the... But a lot of purchases, his equipment purchases of what he's buying, that's what he also is showing you. So a lot of these will be contracted services, not necessarily coming out of this budget. But this other list. Um, 2019? Well, he's got proposed equipment, but not necessarily the project side. 2019 proposed project. But that's contracted. We hire out. Paving company for that. We hire a paving for that. Right. So but if you look at the dollar figures, banks twenty, uh, twenty-five thousand, fifty thousand. You're saying you'd be nice that they hire out on that? Potentially. What's that? Potentially. Uh, I believe they did do the work. Potentially. No. So, are we committed to doing the sidewalk repairs from You're the You're not committed to do any of that. No, but are you planning for? You We're going to do the sidewalk. Yeah, so that's right. This, right. Is, this is what you propose you're doing, correct? Right? Not everything. No, the, okay. the major no, jobs the are the big are money budget. items are the contract yeah. with, for roads. Yeah. That is going to take up ninety percent or better of what we ask for for the school money. Okay. Yeah, but so the sidewalk repairs, um, that's a plant, internal plant expense. That's correct. Mm -hmm. 
and then the stabilize the culverts. Is that an internal expense? No, that requires a bigger piece of equipment, so that'll take out of out of world money or this or culvert fund, whatever they want to use it out of. Yeah. So how about the ditch work? Ditch work we'll be doing ourselves. We may have to hire a machine, rent a machine, not hire one. That's what we're saying. Yeah. And I'm not, again, George, I'm not disputing the nope. need by any means, but I think, you know, as a taxpayer who's on this committee, it's a tough swallow. So I can imagine your public coming in and not being able to point and say, okay, this makes sense. Right. So, whereas if you could say we're spending $50,000, we're saving 75000 and the public can see that, they're going to be much more on board is just seeing an increase in the salary. Just a, a, a few of the projects we did, the fire station was quoted as a $10,000 repair. We've done that for less than $2,000. So is there any way that it'll look forward in two weeks from now and say these are the projects we're planning to do, this is what it would cost outside, and this is what we're going to do it for, and actually show the specific amount that you're going to save? Right. Mm -hmm. it, you put I put in this. Yeah, Honestly, that strikes me as not a great use of our town resources to go out and get bids that we don't actually need. I think what we need to make clear for the town is that these aren't necessarily savings that you can see in the budget, but these are things that we would be spending that we don't now have to spend, right? So it's not necessarily that we're saving money we spent last year, it's that we're getting improvements that are costing significantly less than they would if we didn't have these people and But these. it's hard to sell without numbers. If you, right. don't, if you don't know what the projects are, it is, really, but it's hard I to sell. Find, I would rather them be out there doing work. So we're just guessing at numbers then. So we, I'm not denying the work, I'm just saying you have a payroll well, increase here of 29%, 11%, 4%. It's the heart, it's the, and I'm not saying it's not needed. What no, I'm saying is as a, as a taxpayer, people are going to look at that and go, why is that higher if this all this pool money down here, which went up as well, is going to contracted services? It would be advantageous for the highway department to be able to say, well, we're going to do this project, this, you know, and the approximate cost, he doesn't need to go get bids. That's a waste of time and money, but he's, he knows the approximate cost. And that's all. It's a comment that it's a lot of money, it's the biggest increase, and I think it's a hard sell if nobody can speak to it. I agree with Michelle. You know, as, as a manager, my boss made me jump through hoops if I was going to spend money. You know, get your estimates, you know, where are the cost savings, and it shouldn't be any different for this town. You know, um, even though it's a, you know, public dollars, um, we still should try to be you know, act like a business. You, know? you can't just throw numbers together. Well, perhaps if we could also point out, you know, this is the work we did this year that we spent X amount of dollars on and we didn't spend X plus ten dollars on. And here's, you know, point out some of the some of the jobs that have been done by our, our own people and that they cost us significantly less, and that's what you anticipate doing again in, in the future. I know next I think George year. did pull something like that yeah. together for us it's, last time. Yeah, it's, it's again demonstrating to the public it's a wise use of our, our tax dollars. I think that's very beneficial. You know, but that some of it doesn't have any little dollar figures around it. Oh, and the value. You know, what's the business value in some of it? But I, I agree with Michelle, you know, um, this budget has gone up significantly in the last couple of years, two or three years, um, <clears throat> and I have a hard time saying that without a, without a plan. So speaking of that, on to that, um, can, can we talk a little bit about <clears throat> the proposed equipment purchases and what projects they'll be funding? So the, the paint striping machine is pretty straightforward. Um, so we do our own line striping in town. We have it. But we're going to. I thought Jeff did that a couple years ago. No, we hired out a company that did all the parking spaces in over here. Mm -hmm. And so the machine would do all that. Correct. Okay. 
The only line strike we won't be able to do the center lines. And that's always contracted out. Um, and so what is planned for the hammer drill? What project is that for? What, what page are we on? It's the equipment list that he supplied. Okay. We've done five or six projects that we had to borrow our own tools in to use, and we decided if we're going to rent something two or three times, it's probably we ought to have one. So, what, what do you got planned for it for this year? Any projects we do, we, I mean, we're going to be using the hammer drill, like, again, borrowing a hammer drill to do a project at the transfer station. Any projects we do that we need a drill, you know, a hammer drill with is what we need, to, you know. I can't explain exactly what we're going to use on it, but it's to have it. I mean, we're, what we're, we're step ladders and ladders, we're operating with uh, home step ladders, not even weight rated. You can drill through concrete. We use, you know, I mean, we use it on several projects already. I mean, we're using edge tools or my tools or, you know, it's something that should be have, we should have in the highway department. Um, so, but you don't have any projects that you know of planned for this year? I don't have the projects. Right. Can you can you speak to your list, George, about what your plans are for these different um, expenses? Which, that list that, on the equipment? Yeah. Like what would you use a metal cutting band software? Do you want just examples? Maybe not a specific job, but what would you? Well, what's an example? And then. No, I mean, like, do we have a plan to use these things, or are we just buying them? Really? Because I'd love to buy all kinds of tools too, but I'm just buying what I need. And the replacement blades for the chippers, so mm -hmm. no brainer. We know what that is. I got a question. Cutting, I want cutting edges. Let's, let's, let's do one. Yeah, one question at a time. Okay. Do, do we, what number are we on that you want answers on? Um, well, we're we'll going to answer on the hammer drill, but we'll skip to the painting tools. Um, that makes sense because you guys are doing mm -hmm. a lot of patching. Okay. Um, do we not have painting tools now? No. We're doing a lot more than we did. And so the, the band saw. We we fabricate a lot of items, and we you know we blades, cut. blades break. Right. Well, it's a whole saw, isn't it? It's a saw. Yes. Yeah, so an example that you fabricate some kind do you, of plan. Do you have for plans yeah. for it this year? Do you have plans for something this year? When we break things and we need to cut metal, we that we want to you know that's what we need a bandsaw for. It's not something you're going to use every day. But when you fabricate equipment and stuff, so that, that, that would let me ask a question: Would that be something like for the for the plow and things like that? When, yeah. yeah, when we you know we fabricated a plow frame on the back of to, to uh, uh, when we had a breakdown last year, so we can now put a truck plow that breaks down. We can actually use it on the back hole. and uh, we uh, uh, made a bracket to put the. Uh, Create a machine on that we did the shoulders with. We make you know we make different tools instead of going out and buy all these things. And, you know we fabricate a lot of things instead of going out and, and asking to purchase them. We had a significantly you know lower cost, a lower cost. I was asked to give a list of items to justify the equipment. Yeah, I and I appreciate it. I just need to understand what projects they're going to be used for. Or are we just stocking our tool ships? Well, you can't always, you're doing maintenance, you don't know what's going to break, you don't know what's going to come up. I mean, a chainsaw, trees fall down, you can't predict. Um, I think what you're just trying to do is I, have the... I think we're getting really deep into the roots myself, but that's just me. Oh, but we're talking about another significant increase in that line. Right, we're talking about the increase of another labor and part-time stuff. And now we're talking about equipment for another five thousand um, dollars in equipment this year. Um, so we have twenty nine thousand dollars left in the Howie budget. Is there any likelihood you can buy any of that out of this budget? It's too late. Too late. It's, it's the second. <laughs> if the invoice doesn't oh, come in, so why didn't we buy it first? first? Why didn't we buy it? Because I, I have to get permission to buy these things. I just don't go out and buy them. <laughs> I got a question on the 
replacing the blade on the chipper? Yes, sir. Why are we doing that if, if in the budget we're putting in 3500 for outside contractors to do it? It's, we still chip. We still have to go out and chip the wood that trees fall and stuff on like that. On the side of the road? Correct. Okay. And, and we're going to be clearing the ditch lines on a lot of these roads that haven't been cleared in years. So we can get the water to flow in the ditches instead of in the on down the middle of the roads. So the okay, road, for instance, an old mill road. So we get some ditch work to do, and there's a lot of small trees that need to be cut, and we're going to be running them through the chipper. The chip has already been sharpened once. It's a reversible blade, but they are getting worn out, so they have to be replaced. Do we don't have a chainsaw now. We do have a chainsaw. We're trying to have a smaller chainsaw. Mm -hmm. To get into you know to some areas that when we you know climb a ladder to cut a tree you don't you don't want to be carrying a bigger the bigger chainsaw and stuff. It just a, it makes it a little easier to do some of the work we do. Why do we need an increase for some of this? Why do we need? Why are we asking for more money when we didn't spend what we have? I, I believe, and I'm, I'm, I can ask George to, to follow up. But, but the uh, painting jobs that we had for Heritage and for Woods Run were substantially different than what they ended up what they planned to do, and so they didn't end up using, even though they didn't get as much done as they planned to, they expended more on other items and therefore couldn't finish the whole whole job. So there's, so they didn't do the whole job that was anticipated, so they had leftover money, and that, that was my understanding. Is that George correct? And that's, that's why there was extra money left. Yeah. Does that become a warrant article? No. no. All of this is not writing budget now. So, um, question on the road maintenance and resurfacing. Um, the 307, that's an actual number? 190, online 197. Yep, 197. That's an actual expenditures on. Um, does that include our, our own projects, internal projects as well, or is that just contracting? Which? The 307. It's, um, it's contractors, it's um, materials, um, it's anything that could be considered repairs or maintenance on the roadways. So the major construction absolutely happens within that line. It's different from, that line is different. The expenses on that line is different from the last report you received because the highway department did all the gravel work for the major developments, that paving project. They did all the gravel work in-house. In so um, we moved some of the gravel expenses into roadway maintenance because it was something that was um, covered under the quote to do that project. It was considered part of that project. Um, so it's mostly contracted. Um, it is some supplies and it is some um, pavement, actual pavement expense, for example, for the fire station. George, you mentioned how many tons of pavement that you guys did. That's included in this. Right. We, this, we, we put 85 tons of cut top out and we used 44,000 tons of gravel or something. And that's in this line item? That's correct. So contract services plus those, those roadway maintenance items. Mm -hmm. So did we buy um, tools and equipment out of that as well? No. Mm -hmm. So no paving tools or any paving equipment came out of that? No. Now the stuff we use for the roads was for the roads. The money we use for the roads was for the road projects. Be it sidewalk repair on Scottsdale Circle that was broke up, uh, or any other road repairs that we did. And we cut, you know, we down here by the store, we cut out a big section of the hot top and had to rebuild that road under there. All the road projects were done under road money. Equipment stuff was bought under equipment. Michelle? 
on line 192 for sand and gravel. Um, it's a large increase over 17 um, for 18, and 18 we barely touched on it, which I'm understanding now is because it was shifted into a different line, but does that line need to be that high? Because for two years in a row we didn't come close. Is that because we're using all salt instead of sand and salt like we used to? Is that maybe the difference? Or? Uh, uh, sand. Uh, the sand and uh, gravel. The sand and gravel. Um, I think that is part of it, but I think it's always been kind of... Um, it's a... Um, I'm not sure how to articulate this. It's a very weather-dependent department. So caution with that, and even with gravel, because when you get heavy rainstorms, it washes out all the gravel on the side of the road, and then you go and replace the gravel, and then you never get another heavy rain, and it replaces, all, and it washes out all the gravel. So um, I'm not speaking specifically to any one particular line, um, but just to say about the highway department that you can have a heavy winter, it impacts salaries and salt. Um, if you have heavy rains, which we're having more and more of, it impacts things like gravel. So you never know what's going to happen, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. It's not just about the history. Right. Point, well, a point taken, but it, I'm just saying that it's a $3,000 increase over something that hasn't been used for two years in a row. And I'm just asking why. Because no. I know we don't put sand in the salt anymore, so it seems to me that that would be a reduction your salt would go up, your sand would go down. I haven't bought any sand. I buy gravel. To, to, we, we, when we do shoulder work and stuff, we got to bring the hut up, the gravel, fill in your shoulders to bring it back up to the height of the road. Uh, sand, I had some sand given to us from the uh, cemetery that we, you know, when they dig holes and stuff, you ask us to take a few loads of sand out of there to keep them in hand. But the gravel is when we're doing shoulder work. and. I don't know how much shoulder work was done prior to me, but I know there's some shoulders that we've been adding a lot of gravel to. And that's why the increase on the gravel side of it. So it's, it's under sand and gravel, it's, but it's gravel. Bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's all I know. I just have one quick question. What is the price per ton for salt right now? $55. Okay, thank you. And some change. 18 cents. I think it's 55, 18. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Um, question about, um, so the, the road surfacing line, um, so you have, you're anticipating um, doing Sligo um, and also doing Moses Car this year? Yes. Um, where did you come up with those numbers? Those are estimated numbers of uh, on off the last year's quotes, but okay. there will be some increases in because the hot top has gone up. What was the quote for um, those two projects last year? Two hundred. The combined project was two hundred ninety-five thousand. Okay. What, what, you, what you're maybe explain this. But what you're saying is that you used unit pricing Correct. that we got from contracts last year to estimate what the cost would be to do these other projects. There's not a specific quote on these That's projects right. yet. It's just looking at the length and width and the um, estimated volumes and using unit pricing from before. That's where you're coming up with these estimates. That's right. At, that at, so, at some point, we'll go out this. We wouldn't have a fixed number until the one after So, yeah, we'll have to bid on it. So we did get a bid on it. No. We did last year. We will yeah. this year. It's just yeah. we haven't got them yet. What was the and there was also a tender road one. Right. So it's still active, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so is the road up to date? Well, up to date in that um, it's been carried out in the order in which those things are listed. It needs updating. We're waiting for the Regional Planning Association to offer training. Um, and then theoretically, all the roadways as listed would just bump up a year because what turned into um, the 18 projects turned into two year projects. So, and then we'll add Sligo Road to that. So that it's not as though there's much updating to do except for another year worth of road conditions to add. 
and there might be some reprioritization. Right, exactly, which is always subject to change, yeah. So so the three twenty five so we're under budget this year on that line by about almost forty thousand um, dollars. but we're so we're asking for more and this is all estimated numbers, right? That's correct. Those are estimates. By cost of last year. Do we do we have a so we got a bid on these last year, Jody? Uh not for I wasn't on the for when they got the bids for this year's work, because that's when I yeah. left off. Yeah. So we estimated what we thought the bids would be for the work in 2018. 20, yeah, 18. So um, we estimated it, then you go to town meeting, then you get the bid, because you don't have the asphalt price yet. Mm -hmm. So, and you try to get it in as fast as possible. Okay. And I thought we had I thought we had bids before the town right. around the time of the town meeting last right. year. We had, well, it wasn't and, and we'll have bids before the before the meeting, before right. the town vote. There'll be right. bids. Oh there we will. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on roadways? I assume there's no questions on street lighting? Or street, I'm sorry, I have a question. Oh, so I have a question, um, sorry. Yeah. So on the, maybe this is wrong, I mean, this is very wrong. My, my didn't turn out very well. So, um, the, so the cold patching, that's a, so that's separate from the resurfacing? Is that just materials? Cold patching is, uh, we, we, we only use that in the wintertime. Yes, it's just materials. It's primarily pot holes and small patches. What, um, okay. Oh, sorry, what's the, so can somebody tell me the expenditure on that? Because my, I didn't, right. 14, 14. Mm -hmm. And we're increasing that as well? But we were only a quarter expended. Looks like it. Why'd you go up? Why did the cold pack go up? Because it, we didn't use the budget last year, and so Kim's asking why, why we're going, why we're increasing if we didn't use it. Well, if, if you see Sligo Road and stuff, we're going to be using a lot more cold packs. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> Sligo Road is falling apart, unfortunately. Uh, and we will be using a lot more coal patch and we just maintain that road per se. We new potholes every storm. But, so that wouldn't be covered under the Sligo Road project though? Uh, that's not so in between, really fix it. between now and then. I walked it actually yesterday. It's a little work. <laughs> but I can't say it needs $5,000 for the work. Well, coal patch is $125 a ton compared to hot top being $70 some odd a ton. We can't use hot top in the winter time. So that's, that's why, we, you know, it's going to be a lot more costly. And that's why I stopped using coal patch in the summertime. We passed a lot more holes with hot stuff, trying to avoid having to redo them. But unfortunately, with the way Sligo Road's falling apart with the rain and stuff right now, it's, we're going to be using a lot of coal patch. It may not take the four or five thousand dollars, but it's, uh, You'll notice the significant difference. Last year we only used the 1400s because, like, again, we used hot talks in the summertime. I just went on, I didn't design last year's budget. And you may be able to, this, this year you just don't know. Right. Again, you know. You did! Yeah, um, question. 
machine gun room. You can move on to the next one. Street lighting. <laughs> <laughs> sanitation. There's got to be questions on sanitation. <laughs> What's the um, comment on 203 about attendance of three people for three days, one person Saturday only? Is that an increase of one person yeah. on Saturdays? Mm -hmm. That's not one person on Saturday. No, no, that's okay. Just that one person. Uh, so you're going to have four people on Saturdays now? We will have four people. That's what we had towards the end of the year last year. We had added a, a, a sadly only person. A sadly individual. That's not your manager, your transportation manager, right? Mm -hmm. What's that? No. So does um, your transportation manager, is he in that salary line? No. He's not just the transfer station manager. No, he works. He works full time with the highway department. Right. He just has that responsibility. He covers it there, not official handed. So how many? Um, so there's what? Sixteen hours? Are they sixteen hours now? Mm -hmm. Part, the the uh, part timer sixteen hours? Yes. Okay. And there's one person that just works Saturday. understand because of our, our uh, single stream recyclables costs went up because of considerably worldwide uh, mm -hmm. issue and uh, and that's why we switched over to we're going to be switching over to the Baylor and doing single uh, uh, separated uh, do we have an idea of what the costs savings there might be or cost differences I have a, I don't have that list with me, I believe, tonight, but uh, in trucking alone, by eliminating, by going to recycle, uh, sing, back to re regular recycling, trucking alone is going to be $11,700 a year savings. Uh, and we will now be able to make money on our tin, aluminum, and plastics once it's bailed. Right now we're paying $65 a ton to get rid of this stuff. By Bailing aluminum and tin and putting it with our metal, it's going to raise the price of our metal that we, the scrap metal, because they're going to be all picking it all up at the same time and giving us a higher rate uh, for the aluminum and tin and adding the, uh, the metal to it. We're hoping to be able to bail paper, not knowing what we're going to get for cost on that yet. We're still trying to get some numbers. And cardboard, of course, we're still we, we're making money on cardboard. But just eliminating the single stream recycling that we're paying $65 a ton plus $200, $25 a trip to get rid of. Uh, it's going to save us $11,000, $11,700 trucking alone on single stream recycling. I, I'll admit that I helped do a little analysis of recycling and, and uh, we would be we would be paying out something like seventeen thousand dollars a year for uh, uh, for single stream if we continue with what we're doing now by breaking it up using relatively conservative estimates. We'll have a net revenue of around three thousand dollars, three to six thousand dollars. It's an estimate because you don't know exactly what the breakdown is going to be, but for overall, it's it's a savings close to twenty thousand um, dollars. So that's that's a good. Yeah, we've got to be able to, got to, be able to show that being better. Yeah, and the mailer yeah. costs, what, $17,700 one year. That's a pretty good ROI. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Michelle. Um, do you, when you bail up your cans, are you locking those up? 
we weren't here a few years ago, but people were, we were neatly bailing the tin and they were coming and taking it under the cover of night and well, <laughs> through the woods. <laughs> we have a, the, the uh, of course now you see the transmit station all fenced in and we have security cameras on it. So. Have you haven't had any issues at all? Well, I haven't seen it. We haven't had any issues with the transfer stations that I'm aware of. We haven't been bailing the tin. We haven't been bailed tin yet. <coughs> yet. So right now it's just in the single stream, so we right. have to do a lot of work. Well, we had it nicely bailed, and right. they came and took it for us under the cover oh, of really? night. Oh, really? So, yes. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that it's well, safe. Well, with the previous gate that was on there, it wasn't too hard. <laughs> Did the cost of the of the MSW? Yeah. We're not hauling. It's not going out nowhere near as what it used to go. Out. I'm not exactly sure how many times it used to go, but that it used to go out twice, uh, twice a week. Sat Wednesdays and once a week. Wednesday, every Wednesday, so Saturday would be empty. Yeah. Well, we so. always have we always have an empty bale. We're packing the bale as tight as we can as, as we were. The single stream we were packing a lot tighter, so it wouldn't be going out half empty. Right, because we were only setting it out at five tons and right. only half full. So. And of course, we already took the glass out of the uh, single out of the single streams, which save which is the savings of half of the tonnage of that we were putting out. Glass we were paying thirty five dollars to get rid of glass versus the sixty five that was on top of. You know, in, in with the single stream recycling. So separating that, and we're not dumping glass nowhere near is what we used to, you know, what we used to do. We then we going out as waste. So is the increase because of higher cost? The cost per haul, yes. Yeah. And glass will be able. We do the glass will truck ourselves when we get up. We can pick it up right with the dump truck up to our waste manager now for thirty-five dollars a ton dresses, hauling it out with the in the dumpster up to you know at sixty-five dollars a ton with the regular single stream. Any other sanitation questions? Are we going to contract that out, 3500 or are we going to do it in-house? We were hoping to do it in-house last year, and the guys didn't want to, but after they started, we got a late start on it, they didn't want to do it in-house, and uh, we're going to have to chip it out. We're going to have to chip what we have, so we're going to have to do that outside. That was not in the budget last year. We took 3500 out last year. Parks and Rec. How about the library? Charlie. We've got 2% for everybody else, but the director got 3% in the library.
when the budget committee votes to cut the bottom line, the percentage that's taken from the library must be no more than the percentage taken from, it must be distributed equally. You can't take just from the library. So if you're going to decrease that by 1%, whatever that 1% equals as a percentage of the whole library budget, in theory, you're taking that 0.05% from all the budgets. In other words, you can re recommend that it come strictly from the library budget, but the select board would have to distribute that cut equitably throughout department. That's because of a, a, a law? Yes. That's by law. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. I know. Because if you make a cut, you, they want us to tell you where it's coming from. And then if we tell them where it's coming from, I know they don't have to take it, but they don't have to, so they have to take it over everywhere. Okay. I see the point. No, it's just live. Could I ask a clarifying question? Mm -hmm. I can provide you the valuation, but really it's net cost divided by valuation. Right. That's the, the equation. And, yeah, and I think we did that. It didn't come out to 58 cents. So it does if you take 194 as the difference in operating budget, mm -hmm. and then you account for the $30,000 change in revenue. If you divide that, that 164 something, by the 280 million, you get the 58 cents. Uh, okay, I came up with the 58 cents last time too. Yes. When I came, but I made a mistake. Okay. We don't have almost 30,000 in revenue. We actually have 86.25 less, plus the 30. So that is less revenue 
than that. Where are you I'm sorry, where are you seeing 86 million? Okay, if you take, when I took and looked at your uh, estimated, I did the adjustment. So that's why I came up with a 30,000. I'm looking at the bottom line of the <laughs> revenue from this year, from 19 over 18. Yep. And what was it projected? Bill? So the difference is 29,999. Originally, was 1,530,000. Then it was revised 30,000 less. So you got to go back to the other number, not the revised. No, the it is the revised. Budget, it was one and a half. It is the revised because the tax rate is set from the revised. So it is the revised. Yes, but that means we've got less revenue, not more. Okay, I will check. I will check that. Yeah. It should be the 30,000 minus 8,500. So that would bring it up another number of cents. I don't check that. Yeah, so if, if we could just get the actual calculation, the revenue, the expenses, and then we can see how the numbers play out, that would be great. Via email. Uh, well, before we go to public hearing, we could. Remember, we put a public hearing email. on this on the 12th. So. Yeah. We have uh, maybe Saturday or, or uh, oh okay or before before we go on as well. Mm -hmm. we see it. And then two other things is um, the breakdown of the police salaries and the breakdown um, of the fire salaries, including the hours. And if you're breaking that down, could you also break down the uh, on the paper? Make sure that we have it in writing the. Uh, personnel for the town administrator and part-time bookkeeper and oh I, mean, I have those percent. figures if you want them define um, what you're looking for on the breakdown what are you looking for I'm just looking for what I'm talking to Kim hold oh, on one okay. second um so on police I think we all wanted to know how the salary lines broke out and their by increases. position yep and their increases um and then same for the fire is um, the number, the number of people uh, paid, number of man hours. He's only going to be able to give you what he's doing for this year, though, because he doesn't know a fire. He's not. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know about next year yet. Right. Yeah. No, we want to know. Oh, he wants this year. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. We need to figure out. We want to know how much to basically making now. Okay. And you know that there will be a range based on how they yeah. show yeah. up. Well, you said you had man hours, too. Yeah, I have that man hours. But the range, the salary range is yeah. going to be different for every one of them based on what they make for calls. So if you have, like, if you have all of your firefighters mm -hmm. um, and you know how much you pay each individual firefighter, and you know how many hours that they work. Can't you no. no, they don't. No, they don't. They don't. When you have a call that has ten people, the points pay less than if you have a call where five people come. Right. So, so the, the point hours, value changes for every event. So you have to put it up. You have to say, man X, so many dollars. Man Y, so many dollars. That's the only way. You can so that doesn't tell so, us. So there's no oh, way. Can I ask this way? But you can do hours. Can I ask a question this way? So if you had five people show up for a fire, mm -hmm. just say all year, mm -hmm. and they made $10 an hour. Mm -hmm. Is it safe to say if you had 10 people show up, it would be $5 an hour, or does it not work that way? <laughs> See what I'm saying? I, I it's it's got to be some kind of formula. I, I, mm -hmm. I haven't seen the formula myself. I mean, okay. it's, it's different when... Because I love mass, if you want to give it to me, I'll figure it out. It's broken down in quarters. It's, it's, broke, it's broken down in quarters, quarters, and it's based on who, how many, how many times you show up. and what the hours that they put and in. And how many give you hours. And what their rank is. And how many events. And what their yes. rank yes. is. Yes. Yes. And it also, yeah. what they do on the outside of fire calls, inspections and training, uh, training yeah. and, you know, it, there's a lot of variables on there. So, we'll get you a run by first, and yeah. then if it's not enough, then we'll ask for more information. I'll do the best I can to get you what you're looking for. I, I'm just trying to figure out how he has determined that they're not making minimum wage. Like the must have the I mean, it would be very simple to say these are the number of hours. Yeah. It doesn't matter who they are. These are the number of hours. This is the dollar amount he has to spend. Divide it in, and that's going to give you a rough right. 
estimate of what it would be. Yeah. But I think that, that what what complicates the the situation until I see it actually watching him calculate it out is because every rank has a, is worth a different amount of points. Right. So, oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. the firefighter yeah. is one uh, one point, and the lieutenant is two uh, points and per hour. So it complicates. I got you. It. Until I, I have to have him show me how he's doing to me to really understand it because it, it's complicated. Can we get the I don't know why they have to do the it points? that way. But what's that? Get the breakdown for the points. Yeah, from from, from the, the highest level the down, yep. this position is worth this point yep. times this hours. Yep. But when you have a fire call, you I can know. have five officers and no firefighters. Yep. Could, could we take it as, an in, as a position, so they say, or obviously it's an individual, and say, okay, they worked X number of hours last year and they were compensated Y, therefore they received X dollars per hour. Right. And you could do that for each rank yeah. and we get a sense for it doesn't I'm thinking it's that easy but let me just talk to Mark because I, I, I really don't I think it's a, a very complicated pay scale. I, I, think I really you know, do from from what I know because my son was on the, on the force I think what you have to do is you have to take all the firefighters put them in a thing and you don't have to put their names down but you can say firefighter A, B, C, D, yeah. and E and how many hours they work and what they got and then in the next class the whatever the next okay. class mm -hmm. is, and then the deputy, and mm -hmm. what he got, and then mm -hmm. the, that's the only way you're going to see it. Yeah. And then you'll be able to see that, oh yeah, these firefighters are making $3.20 an hour, the firefighters are. Mm -hmm. As you go up in the ranks, they're making, you know, the, the chief and the deputy and whatnot, they're making more money. Mm -hmm. They're making three times or five times what the firefighters are making. Mm -hmm. so. but just as a point of which is we're getting in the weeds again, but if these are on-call volunteer firefighters, there is no minimum wage requirement because they are mm -hmm. volunteers. When you start, they're volunteers. We've, we've had that discussion. They're no longer volunteers. So they're being, taxes are taken out, they're being treated as employees. Of course. Oh, yeah. Okay. Then they, oh, they right, are then employees. They do have to make minimum wage. So that's but they a whole don't. other thing. Well, that's a, but that's a whole, yeah, that's a huge issue right there. Cool. If they are, in fact, employees, they do have to make minimum wage. I think we're going to find that we're going to have to really increase because we shouldn't, instead of perhaps the fire department has to redo its point system and say, you're going to get X, get rid of the points and just you know, stop dollars. Yeah, because if you don't do the basic you know, calculate how, how many hours are putting in for a dollar amount, then um, how do you know, like, how do you enforce minimum wage if you don't based on an hour? Right. You know? So we have to know how many hours each person is working and what they're making in order to say, yes, they're getting minimum wage legally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they, they do know how many hours they're working, but it's not minimum wage. Well, that is, but that, that's a problem because they're either volunteers or they're not. And if they're not, they've got to make at least a minimum wage. It's not an option. It's so they're going to require the formula. This is another yes. step on the journey of a thousand miles. We have to <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they are. I will ask if I will say it. But they can give us a four married on their own. I got a W2. This Saturday? No, no, no. Next, the following Saturday? I would see why you can't. I'm just going to say, I'm going to send him an email tonight. And I will ask him to have a meeting with me so he clearly understands why we're doing it and how soon we need it. I mean, they just did the payroll. There should be no question about their formula. They should know what their formula is because they've been doing it the whole year. We should. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I have a question about breaking out the um, increases per uh, position for the police department mostly. Um, because it's a merit based raise, merit based increase, and we have such a small police department, are there any personal privacy? It could be issues that we should take into consideration before we stop. It's a public record, but, but is 
exactly. And you could determine it based on their sal uh, on their salary, not on their overtime probably, but on their salary. You would be able to determine from last year to this year what they got. For because raise. the city of Dover posts everybody's salary. Everybody's salary is published. No. I mean, mine was published. Ninety-one A. It's in public information. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying for the Department of Five, it's it's easily determined. Um, and most of your state towns that posted in the paper are union, and it's not merit based. So, are we going to have a motion to bring forward the? I'm not sure what the bottom line is. To bring forward to the. We've got a number for a bottom line. The number keeps changing. How are we going to vote it? It's one nine four one nine, right? I'm not okay. That's the difference. The total is correct. The total. The appropriate, the approved appropriation um, is two four zero three eight seven nine. The only thing that's different, uh, that's questionable, is the change, percentage change. Yeah. But the the two four zero three eight seven nine is the correct number. So maybe what we should do is just hold off voting on it today, tonight, and then maybe if we get more information by Saturday, we can decide if we want to vote to bring that forward to the public hearing. If we still can't, we can, I guess, meet again before the 12th. Is that correct? Yeah, I just can't vote on something that has inaccurate numbers on it. It was me. Anybody object to pushing that off until Saturday? No. No, no, no. I agree. I agree. I think we have to have a final product. Yeah. 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 I found it in my lap. <laughs> you wanted to lose it. I did. Oh, I just got this. I got so it's not cold. I know, I got ice. I just ran out of It's not cold. I know, I got ice. I just ran out of These, I didn't get one of those. These two. That's right. Yeah, these two. That's it. Yeah, these two. That would be mine. We have two things here. We have the soft letter. We have the soft letter explaining what's going on at the beginning of the process. And then we, we tried to put this budget in um, the other format. And, and like I said before, there were basically in the past, capital improvement was a wicked understep line, and then basically everything kind of came from capital improvement in previous years. And the budget that has had been, if you look on the first page, uh, 2018 is your water budget, um, 295 to $95,000. If you look at the second page, 301,903. That budget was the 15, 16, 17, and 18 budget. Yep. So nothing was really ever looked at. Okay. So this will be this will be your first look at it. Looking at so looking at water. First page, um, we had a proposed budget of 295. We spent 293,879. You know there'll be a couple of lagging bills, um, and our proposed budget is 359,686. <sighs> Plus a warrant article for 30,000, another warrant article for 17,000, totaling 47,000 dollars. Total operating budget, including the warrant articles, is 406,686. Um, if you want to look through the lines here and start asking me some questions, I also bought the plant operator and I bought and I brought Allison the treasurer. So I think my biggest thing right now is is your total. Go ahead. Okay. This is going up. So it's a total of how much going up then? It's a total of It's going from Well, let's let's look at this. If you look at expended 2018, 344,755 mm -hmm. is the warrant article from the year before. Mm -hmm. 
It includes the warrant article warrant in the year before. All right. So you're looking, you're going from 344 to 406. So the 60,000 to 8810 that is increasing doesn't include salaries or anything. This is just the mate, just the. No, that, that, no, 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 that, 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 that includes salaries. We are on this line of salaries. So if you look at prop week, we have further down the salaries. Okay. Go to page one, two, okay. three, four. Go to the last page. So there's your proposed salary, your FICA, your pension, your total. So and then the, you can look at your 2018 salary. Okay, so in this operating budget is this is the amount of the salary. Yes. So so the, the change from getting rid of the Warren articles, but looking at your total totals. That's the first page. Yeah. So you're going from 295 to 359, which is approximately 64,000 ish. Yep. And you have a 80 thousand dollar increase in personnel just on line 24. Is that yes. correct? Yes, it is. Now, if you look at it, in 2018, we were budgeted for 16, uh, 56,000. We had a staff of 84, 814 because we brought in people that we needed to bring in. Um, in the letter, we'll talk a little bit about staffing requirements that we weren't meeting, and now we're meeting them. Um, and then a full year with that staff shows the higher number. The 13372. Can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, so the proportional share personnel on the last page. Yeah. The salaries is 191. Should that number match up with number 24 on the first page or no? I was thinking 24 to 23. What? Right? What happened? What? Yeah, which is one. Well, what? Well, what, well, what ends up happening is prop share mm -hmm. is from the water side and from the sewer side. They're both. Both brought okay. together. Okay. So one goes on one so page. So this one is goes just on. water. This this back page is both. Right. Okay. okay. So and then theoretically, the there's like two twenty thousand kind of sewer yeah. personnel. Yeah. Is that this is right there? Right. So the they are because it's fifty fifty split. So what Emily makes my point is, is like if you add together twenty three and twenty four, it's one seventy one four five twenty five. One seventy one. So now go to the top share is one ninety one three. Because on that on that line item, I believe we don't have. Do we have all the other stuff that fits on all that? Yeah, it doesn't look like any other salary and benefit costs. Hold on a second. Is that what you're saying, Emily? Yeah. Exactly. Do it again. So 23 and 24 totals of 171,525. Mm-hmm. But your, your salaries on the last page is 191,325. Can I butt in for one second? Sure. Okay. Um, on the... Top share page, the third page. The very last number to the right, 243050. Yeah. You divide that by two, which is the total top share plus personnel. That equals the 171 that you're oh, that's adding right. up the 130 plus the 41,000 on that first page, the two numbers you're adding. Oh, so this salary includes your um, taxes. No, no, no. Look at the look at the fuck. I should have explained that. So the, the prop share page, mm -hmm. yep, yep, I get it. page three, has other things in it. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, so and and then the back page is only the salaries. Yep. So so those other things that are in 
But all those things add up to prop share. So 343.053 divided by 2 is that $170-something thousand dollars. Is 171 part 25? Yeah, correct. That makes sense. But where? What about this? This salary? Yeah. That's a portion of it. That's a that's a portion of it that goes to both. But it's more than what you have in this budget. On one page, but you got to add this page plus that page. The first the page. Numbers. The first page plus the second page. So one the, is water, one is sewer. Yeah, but they're the same numbers. Yeah. They would be. The so last page. But they add it together. Sixty thousand. Okay, so 40, you got to double everything, is what you're yes. saying? Yes. Okay. Um, for the salaries. Two. 260,000 plus. I got $343,050. Mm -hmm. right? That doesn't make sense either. All right, help. So the 191 is a portion of the three four. Yeah. Where do you derive this number from? And Allison is welcome to come in and oh. help. <laughs> That's okay. I don't mind sitting back there the majority of the time. So this 343, yeah. which is all of these random things plus the personnel and yada, yada, yada. Okay. That is these two numbers together. Right. It's exactly half of that. Similarly, that is two. So if you take okay, those got four it. numbers, cool. you would now, get that. What's this 191? Oh, sorry. Those are 2018. Anyway. Oh, gotcha. So 2019. Oh, you used the 191? So it's 2018. And not the new one. So those numbers. So you're oh, of course they were. No, no, it's just 2018. Okay. And yeah. 2019. Well, they're not yeah. some yeah. Okay. Okay. the exact. One but like salaries. Oh, got it. Oh, so you're saying salaries. We have to do something that will be that number right there. Okay. Just explain that the prop share is split between two the two departments. In other words, the prop share is split. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Okay. Here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah. so if everybody understands, the first page is water, the second page is sewer, yeah. and the third page is what we call proportional share or prop share. And prop share is everything that's going on in the office, basically. Mm -hmm. the, you know, the, un the, the uniforms, the workers' comp, the, the, uh, the trust reimbursement, all of that stuff, and and. The employees. Okay. The cost of the employees. So we're talking about one hundred and fifty-two thousand dollars increase yes. in salary, salaries and benefits. Yes. Because we weren't staffed the way that we were supposed to be staffed. One hundred fifty-one seven hundred and fifty. Yes. Is the increase in salary and benefits this year? Um. Well, hold on. Yeah, that's the difference between the three forty-three zero five zero and the one ninety-one three. Mm -hmm. No, last year is three six. Um, no. So, this is last year's salary and benefits, and then the 343 is this year's. Right. So this year's salary and benefits is 343050, right? Yeah. What line do you want to do? On the total on the prop share. Uh, no, because you're including stuff that's on the office. That's prop share. That's not, that's. If Not just the last page is personnel. If you last only want to look personnel. at personnel, you, you have to go to the last page. Yeah, 260 versus 191,300. Oh, okay. Actually, I see it. So just your salary and benefits. So 260 versus 191. Right, gotcha. So, okay. This is too organized. 68. So things are up about 70,000. 70, 69. 69,000, yeah. From what we from what we spent this year, and the reason that they weren't up all, totally is because we didn't have a whole year at the right at, at a good staff. And how, so, how many staff members did you have? Uh, if you look on the back page, uh, we have a part-time operator that we didn't have, and it's number three and number four. These so we have an operator have? at number three, and we have a part-time operator at number four. So those are the two new positions. Yeah. And oddly enough, they add up, they add up to about 70000 but that's just a coincidence. So it's just three and four that we added? Yeah. Okay. 
in the past they had four that they would hire and they'd use once in a while. They, all, they would always kind of have another floater coming and going. Why do you have two different rates on the clerk salary? Because the is clerk that people? had been there for 28 years left mm -hmm. and a new clerk came in. So is it two different people? Yeah. Okay. And there was some overlap as well, so we were paying two clerks at the same time while some of the I think she might on. be referring to the notes, though, Frank, about yeah. how there will yeah. be an increase oh, in that. May ish yeah. to the that's their, that's their pay. Um, that's a pay increase, annual pay increase. Mm -hmm. So we have a set program, um, and we have a set and cost of living program as well. So what you're saying is, is it's one person, but for 19 weeks, that one person is going to get fourteen dollars. And then for 33 weeks, that one person is going to get 1505. Right. She hits her one year part part way through this coming year. That's what that is. So, um, qu question on the superintendent salary. So it's proposed at 100,000. Last year it was 98. Was it only partially funded last year? Because it says it includes an eight thousand dollar bonus. Does that mean that it's really no? His his salary was actually um, eight thousand dollars less. So it was ninety two thousand last year. Hmm? Is that right? Um, that includes the bonus. Ninety eight. Includes seven. Includes eight thousand dollar bonus. Oh, I see. So it was nine. So what we what we did is he had about mm -hmm. nine hundred extra hours work, and we gave him a bonus of eight thousand oh. dollars. This year, in the new one. In two thousand eighteen. So you're carrying it over to two thousand nineteen. No, as well. he has a basic salary now. Okay, keep looking at the wrong one. Right so okay. the most salary is on the left. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm used to looking at the last column being 19. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly So right. it's roughly a $10,000 increase in salary. From 2018 to 2019. Oh, sorry. So Frank, what is the plan um, in the past? We had a lot of um, homes where the water was shut off for lack of payment. So what will be the plan if that occurs with the increase? How are you going to deal with that? One item at a time. Well, it, um, it's a legitimate concern, though, because in the past, and I don't know the numbers, but Dennis was always, could give us the what's number interesting of the is, is in this, What's interesting is, is in this last year, um, Ray, how many have we had? One? We've had one customer, multiple shutoffs, um, out of 680. So I'm not sure where the information came in that we had a lot of shutoffs or disconnects, um, but that's not accurate. They have to be into the... Not their, last year. I was referring to in the past. Maybe years prior to last, but the rate's been the same. Um, the, the increase that we just incurred um, was just to get started, and it, it isn't a full increase, and it was a 12% increase. Um, so water went from 83 to 93. It went up 10 bucks. And sewer went up um, fifteen. Right, so, so there was a so there's a twenty five dollar increase that is actually going in the mail tomorrow. Hmm. Um, but that's not the full increase. I understand that. My, that wasn't my question. My question was, and there were shutoffs. We can you guys can go back and look at the records. I don't think um, the past people were lying to us. Um, right. No, no, no. I don't think so. Either. In the last year. I have a fee Can yeah, I just right. say one thing real quick? I think they may have been talking about past due, not necessarily shut off. It's two different topics. The numbers would be a lot different. Yeah. So I think if we run a report on past due, I, that's going to be different. I think that's what you're, what you're leading oh, to. Sometimes they also have threatens of they going to shut your water off and then all of a sudden the people sure. come in with some money, so maybe it was the threat. Yeah, so maybe, yeah, so physical shutoffs, we had one. In in a given quarter, we might have, what, about eight, ten that we mail out? Maybe. 
So, 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 so we yeah, have to so, give notice. So what would be the plan if this, in fact, causes those types of issues to increase? I guess is we, my, what my question is. We give them notice. We give them time to. Um, we give them notice, and we give them options on how to proceed. And payment plan is one of the options. But I'll tell you from our from our past due experience, uh, we typically just have specific people that are always past due. They just and they play the game. They know that um, once they're three quarters behind, then the shut off notice comes out, and then they come right down and they pay it because they don't want their water shut off. But that's a, that's probably not to do with next year's budget. I agree. Sorry. <laughs> I do have a question. I'm just trying to bring it back into. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, right. But the increases are going to cause more yeah. hardship. On it is. I mean, I, I think that's a shell in this right. town who that's are getting water from their neighbors' garden homes, and I know that because I saw it in the past. So that's why I'm asking. Yeah. And they can come to Walker. That's why we have a Walker department. <laughs> okay, so then that increases the town budget, but. Okay. Well, we're not here to pay everybody's water bill. That's not what we're now, Warren, so you know what the rates are going to be? Well, the rates are going to be probably qualify. about seven, but in total, about a $75 increase. Yeah. Well, but the, 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 and, and unfortunately, we don't know the exact No, 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 no. Okay. Now, I'm just but, trying to get a number so the select board can come up. It was 20, you know, what he did was 25, and it was probably going to be around 75, 70, somewhere around it. Is that 75 a year or 75 a quarter? And right now, 75 on top of what we were paying. What you were paying got a, got a twenty-five dollar increase. What you were paying will probably end up with about a seventy-five dollar increase. Or per quarter. Each one. Per quarter. That's for water and sewer, right? Three and sewer. Okay, what is it just for water? Water and sewer total. Not okay. I don't. I don't have the exact breakdown. Right okay, so there is a difference. So I'm it's about like the. It's about the same. The increases are about the same. So oh. it's going to be hundred and fifty for some. No, 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 no. About seventy-five for a water and sewer customer. So if, it's, oh, if you're just a water customer, probably about half. Okay. Oh, gotcha. Okay. That's what I was looking for. So what does that mean? About twenty dollars a about twenty dollars a month. That's what it means, right? What did you say? No, twenty five. Three hundred twenty five dollars a month. So unfortunately, we're the, the current bill quarterly for base. The, the old bill was 83 for water and 130 for sewer. The new bill is 93 for water and 145 for sewer. So like I said, it's going to be $10 more on one side. Now, if your usage is up, we didn't just yeah, right. we didn't just go out and say, oh, we're going to hit everybody that you know on the on the low end. It's across the board. So your usage is up. Like you know, if your usage is way high, you're going to pay 12 percent more. Um, if you're renting sprinklers, you're going to be 12 percent more. If you're renting hydrants, you you know. Right now, it's in across the board. Question? Do we? So to Joey's point, um, people can go to the welfare department and have the town pay their bill. Um, but on the flip side, if they're property owners, we can certainly put a tax lien on them for that as well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Question about um, the operator positions. <clears throat> so the operator position number three, um, it was that like part time last year? That was that was no time. Because last year was twenty two six eighty eight. Mm -hmm. This year is forty forty one. Where are we looking? So it's at like a eighteen thousand dollars. Oh no, that's because he started halfway through the year. Okay. So it was, oh, okay. okay. And same thing for the other part-time operator? Number four. Yes. Uh, no, that, well, that's a combination. That part-time, uh, that part-time is weekends, and then that part-time is also a mechanic. So we, we haven't had a mechanic to do maintenance and, uh, you know, Maintenance that we should be doing at the plant, so that's budgeted for the me the mechanic position, which is going to hopefully help us with. Um, you know, we have a plant that we put in 14 years ago that has a life expectancy of 20 years. Let's hope that we can prolong that before we're talking about bonding six years from now to. 
do another sewer plant, I mean, another sewer upgrade or whatnot. We want to get, we're, or we've done a lot of homework to get really focused on repairs and maintenance. That's the, that's the big thing. Do you have questions for Frank? I, I would just oh. comment that, you know, with the public hearing. Oh, there'll be a lot of chatter there. Yeah, we'll be ready to present all of this, including, you know, the <clears throat> the uh, surrounding towns, comparable, you know, comparable, and so on and so forth. So I think we're going to bring the engineering report yeah. too that showed back in 2000. We, you know, they did it in the middle of 15. And they said that 14, 15, 16, no, 15, 16, 17, 18, we, we should have had 10, 10, 3, and 3 percent increases. And then if you, if you make, did cumulative, if you look at the money cumulatively, you would have been right about where we are now, which is... Because I, I just think that voters and the public needs to be educated as to you know what the issues are and you know yeah. you make your case. Now Still we have our own. I don't know if you know, but we have our own meeting mm -hmm. in March. Yeah. So we're planning to bring in the in the, in the letter mm -hmm. mentions that we're going to be yeah. setting a meeting. Um, mm -hmm. So we're planning to bring the engineer. And we're planning to bring. We're, we're inviting the DES the Department of Environmental Safety. So you know. People can ask the questions and say, well, why do we have to do this? Or why do we have to do that? Um, so I noticed this letter doesn't really talk about um, the upcoming increase. When, right. when do you intend to send that letter out? It's going to be, um, it well. It really should have gone before the public hearing, you know, because people need to know why they're coming out to. Um, well, it depends on what, go what passes. You don't know what the increase is going to be because you don't know what's going to pass at the, at the meeting. Um, if you look at this, you have warrant articles um, for a chunk of it. I think I think we might have purposely done that. To, you know. Oh, I think historically people, and I think um, Emily can. Um, speak to this, that people come out when there's something <coughs> big to say. If there's things that they don't know about, um, then they stay home, you know, and then they get the surprise in the mail. But they're getting a surprise right now, a first rate increase in the letter, right? And the letter says that more, that there's more the, and it says there's more to come. So, so think we're, and we're asking them to be a part of that decision. But people, I think, need to know the whole picture when they go to vote and they're looking at an increase in the town, an increase in their water, their sewer, um, thank God, the school flat line. Um, you know, I mean, but people need to know what the whole picture is. But you only can vote at the sewer district meeting if you're a user. Mm -hmm. Not the whole town. Okay. 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 Fair enough. But still, those people, those need, oh, those people need to know as well, for sure. But and that's why we're saying, that's why we're saying we'll let them now to, to, to wake them up and say, hey. Well, it's going out with an increased bill. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> probably okay, so this letter, out. this letter isn't going out before you send the increase in their bill that they're going to win the bill. It's going with the bill. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a question about the process. Um, just like the credit historically, we haven't seen increases in the water and sewer. Um, so my question is, is, um, is this part of the, the public hearing discussion for the town and the deliberate session? No, they're not part of it. They're their own entity. It's only this, they have their own, they're going to have their own meeting, uh, the sewer district meeting. So are we they, are they have to be part of the public hearing because they have to have a well, public, have hearing. public hearing. But, but that's it because then they have their town meeting. Right, but they're in not March. part of the deliberative session because Correct. they're not in it. Correct. They have their, own, their own district. They're not in SB2. They're, they're still. They're, they're not SB2. They're, they're town meeting. So their only opportunity to voice anything is the twelfth. Yes. And then at the annual meeting. Yeah. In March. Their annual meeting. Our their meeting. annual meeting. Right. Town meeting. Right. Yes. Like second. Second to the third. Confirming right now. Yeah. So, are, 
are, are we going to vote to bring this budget forward to the town hearing? <laughs> I think when the notice goes out, um, oh, I'm sorry, I was second. when the notice goes out on the public hearing, we need to make sure that people understand this is the only opportunity that they have on the water and sewer. So. That's well, their meeting. Notification of warrants. Mm -hmm. We do it separately, I believe. you have your own set of when when they have to be numbered by five. So when you when you have your notice when you do your public hearing, I mean everyone leaves when you guys start to talk because they're not involved in it unfortunately. But can only people who are residents and part of the district talk? I don't know. Probably. I, I don't know what that... At their meetings. At, at their, their annual meetings. meetings. At their annual meetings. meetings. But yeah. what about the public hearing right. on the 12th? See, it's never... It People it's never always leave. So it's it's never, everybody leaves. It's never been... Well, only if they always says right. it's, it's, There's no increase. There's no increase on that. Yeah, right. yeah, However, this is affecting the operating budget of the town and the school budget. I you need to have yours as well. I think that it's because... The people that aren't affected by it and can't go and vote on it don't understand that they would have the right to express an opinion. No. Well, hold and on. You say it's, it's affecting the operating budget. Well, our that budget is going to go up because of it. <coughs> our water our sewer water and sewer is going to go up because of the rate impact. changes <laughs> and the town budget and the school budget. Yes. Yes. Do you list it on our budget? On your budget? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, which it shows what I said we needed to increase this, but we don't know what to increase it by right. because you haven't given us a rate yet. Right. So, but so I, I can tell you it's going to be between $75 and $80 a quarter if you have both. Well, we only have both here. The others are only um, water. So give me a call and I'll give you the, the closest I can give you for yeah. estimates. Well, I we'll talk about it tomorrow clearly because I sent out something about it to the other two boards. But we'll talk about that tomorrow, and that will have to be increased because right now it's based 40, on last year's rate. Forty percent. That's what Caroline told me. Yeah. So should there be a separate notice of public hearing for the water sewer? There is. They have to. So it's on the same day. Oh, you mean that? No, it's a budget, so it's not a separate notice. It's a budget hearing, not a sewer and water hearing. Right. It's a budget hearing, budget committee's hearing yeah. on all of the budgets. Right. They're a part of that. The town and the They have their the own we have our meeting meetings, yeah, which they have to post. But um, this is a budget. Which is, says here the last week of March, which is after our voting. So, which is theirs. Right. right. Which is, if you think about it, it's kind of ridiculous because we are, we've got a 2019 budget that starts January 1st. So yeah, we don't so get to one of our meeting until March. So does the town. Yeah. Town's the same way. Mm -hmm. And the school mm -hmm. is not until July 1st. It's kind of ridiculous. So, <laughs> so, uh, so you asked why did we increase now? This is why we increased now. My, uh, my question is, are, are we as a budget committee bringing this forward as, as our budget on the 12th. And if so, do we need to have a motion to vote on it so we can get out of here? <laughs> Sorry, Frank, not that I don't want to talk about it. against us, but... If we need it, I vote yes. <laughs> well, I need a motion. Well, I'm just not sure the you, process... So if I you know, haven't brought the select boards meeting, so people can do this at the same time. We have to meet again because you didn't bring Correct. The, right. select, yeah. the town's budget so, board, so you can so contemplate it all you want, and then that we can do it at yeah, the new meeting that we have to have. Saturday, right. Right. Next Saturday, we the rest of them. It's on the agenda yeah. for Saturday. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions for the technical team behind it? No. no. Uh, I do. How do we reduce it from 40% to 25%? We've been trying to do that for a long time. Want to help us, Ray? You're not going to reduce it from 40 to 25. The best chance we would have had to keep the rates lower would have been to properly increase throughout the years. When we're repairing things that have 
failed, it costs exponentially more money to do that, and that's the position we're in right now. Failed as opposed to fix, right? Failed to fix, right? So we've got things that have failed, we've got things that are failing, and to, to operate or to repair things in an emergency mode is just a lot more expensive, there's not enough time to plan. You've got to do things quicker, you can't get as many quotes, it just, it, it just costs more. So what I can recommend is that we pay close attention to it, um, increase appropriately, so that there isn't a large increase down the pipe like we just are faced with right now. That's the only way I can answer that. I, there's no way to cut the budget to get down to 25%. And have quality water and, and, and all compliant. the right chemicals to make it so it's... Is there any, like, I mean, you probably looked into it, but, like, grants from the state or federal grants, like yeah, clean so, water or anything? So we're, with, and again, we're going to have a technical meeting in March to explain all this, so some of the projects that we've got proposed we have by structuring our rates properly which is what we're trying to do opens us up for grant money if and right now we're not charging enough to be eligible for the state revolving fund we got to hit a certain percent of the mi right the cost, the mean household income we don't do we don't hit the percent threshold so we have to bring our rates up to qualify for the forgiveness it sounds crazy but rich or cheap we're not charging enough to qualify, to qualify. And, and there's a lot of reasons why we want to qualify. One being that there's forgiveness, but two, there's, there's low rates and the loans are substantially easier to get than going through uh, bond payments. So, and you're at a lower rate. I mean, lower rates. A little bit lower rates. And they're only in primary treatment now? Say again? Is that primary treatment a plan or is it secondary? We are secondary, but we, we the, the difference between us and most plants is we don't dewater. So our sludge, we end there, and we haul all our sludge as liquid rather than dewatering, um, which is another con topic for conversation. But we're getting a really good rate on hauling the liquid. So if we go to solids, it, it, the, the price would actually go up, and the cost to get to that level would go up. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense right now, but if our cost, we have a lot of variables in, in the loop with the, the hauling liquid. We got the, the hauling costs, we got the disposal costs. So if those prices keep going up, um, there's, there, there could be uh, another topic of conversation to be water. Um, but yeah. we, we've been looking at the budget for, I'm going to say, three to four months now, you know, putting this thing together and meeting with everyone. Um, you know, we, we, we really put in a good position with the engineering with the, um, doing a rate study, um, and we're still we're still working on the long-term rate study to make sure that we're you know, effectively, you know, we're effectively charging people equi you know equitably. Um, we're not going to make everybody happy, um, but you know we're, we're working diligently on a five-year plan so that you know it, it isn't going to be you know like that. Um, but we had to we had to do something to get you know to the beginning point so that we're satisfying the state and we're supplying good water. I mean that's the I think Denise put it best. And Who's your third commissioner? Hmm? Who's your third commissioner? Uh, no, I'm sure. Well, he's got good experience because he's done it before and yep. he's got a good construction head, which is nice. Yep. So, Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Denise, what's the selection? Thank you, everyone. I think it's going to be 6.30. It's supposed to be 6. Yeah, okay. That, that was my I think it's going to be 6.30. Okay. Yeah, it was it that way. Yeah. So originally, it was going to be 6. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. Thank you.